Hey everyone, I'm back. It's time for more Doom! Had me a nice little break. Hope you guys recovered. Ready for more hot video games. I'll say more. I didn't even play a video game before. <clears throat> Kirk Cameron sucks. Huh. Got him! Well said, Conroy. He does, he does. Uh, I, I... <sighs> if there's fun... Um... If there's, if there's something that's fun to do, like, I, I have slowly woken up to the... I like bad cinema, I should say. Yeah, sorry, I interrupted Mr. Bones. Apologies. Doom Core incident. Okay, they're just throwing that out there. Um, I feel like Christian cinema is probably a really good place to see a bunch of really bad... Uh, really bad movies. Really want to watch, but spoilers for me? I think Nasty, have you not started it yet? Brooklyn, you can still watch New Ground Sentai on that. You can do whatever you want. Yes, this Doom Slayer is awesome. Uh, I just finished this last night. It was so good. Would it be spoiler to talk about how you think they could continue the next game? But yes, it would, considering that uh, Thing Nasty just talked... Just expressed their concern about uh, more spoilers. Oh, you're on Nightmare and you're still behind? Okay, you started on Nightmare? Damn. Also good to see you, Hannah. Six Sum, what, uh, what am I watching? This is Doom, baby. I want the Doom Corn, but I feel iffy about giving Bethesda any information. Yeah, I hear you, Doctor. It's, uh... <clears throat> Luckily, there's... I don't know what Bethesda can do with my Amazon shopping that Amazon hasn't already done. I don't know quite what the incentive is to link these accounts together. Uh, but... Yeah. Why does my game turn pink when I turn on HDR at 1440, but not at 4K or 1080? I don't know. That's a good question. Just finished Doom 2016 on Medium. Would you recommend doing it on Nightmare? Yeah. Waffle. Doom on Nightmare is a good warm-up for Doom Eternal on Ultra Violence. I wonder if he was exposed to the Hollywood pedophile ring, either as a willing participant or victim that caused him to dive hard into the dive into the Christian stuff? That's a good... Man, that's a good point. I don't know. Oh, you fear their servers being linked? Yeah, I guess in that, in that case, somebody might get your, like... Well, they don't store your login info, they just have an authorization token. So I guess depending on what, what information they keep resident, um, and how it's stored. <sighs> I think it's just for targeted advertising? Yeah, but there's no advertising- oh, maybe... I wouldn't say that that- like, there's no advertising in Doom yet. But maybe that is, like, end of life planning? Of like, once they have your shit logged in, then they can start putting ads in the game to squeeze monetization out of it two years down the road. When nobody's buying DLC, but people are still playing multiplayer or something like that? Maybe. I can see that. Eliondo, thank you. Um, <laughs> been slowly watching it. Yeah, that's a long video. Um, my, uh, my, my YouTube content is not very well curated. Uh, right at the end of the scrim, the beginning? The beginning, or rather the middle. Um, but yes, I'm about to start playing Doom. However... I'm thinking maybe I do some battle mode real quick. Oh, it's it's sweet too. Damn. Okay. Well, never mind. Till make ah didn't make you buy with microwave beam. That sucks. <laughs> Kill three cacas with arm arbalest. I can do that. Thirty gargoyles with grenade launcher. Just kill frozen demons with blood punch. Only really detonate to kill pinkies. Yeah. Oh, advertising Bethesda shit to you on Amazon? Their various ad platforms and web services? Oh, yeah, it could be. It could be. But, um, I don't know. Just because you're playing Doom Eternal doesn't mean... Like, they don't... I guess I guess all that tells Amazon is that you are playing Doom Eternal. Um, but yeah, I guess the, the challenge is updated. I did, not, I did not get the full spread for the first week, but that's just experience. It doesn't really matter. Okay, now I've got to remember what I'm doing and remind myself how to play this game. I'm probably gonna, it's probably going to be a little rocky until I warm up. And not in like the good Balboa way, in the, in the bad dying over and over way. Which I guess in a way is still like the Balboa way. Um, I can buy a weapon upgrade though. Uh, let's see. Am I... Yeah, let's do this. Why not? Second lock-on target cannot be acquired before firing rocket bursts. 15 Prowlers. Alright. I'll try that. Saw a Twitch clip of somebody killing a Marauder and Ballista. A super shotgun combo after like four cycles. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess what I what I had hoped, what I believed, was that it would be possible to one or two cycle a Marauder, but but maybe it's just not. Maybe it just maybe it just isn't. 
Maybe it's it's just not that kind of enemy. You're just not allowed to do that. Shit. Shit. Out. Hold on, there's like grit on my mouse. Mouse pad, Ultra Nightmare? Not yet. I gotta beat it on Nightmare first. You got through the hard arena. Marauder is the last hard thing in this level. Okay. I'm excited to get to the Marauder. I, uh, I've been thinking about the Marauder a lot. Oh! Hello. Shit, man. All right, fine. Fuck. Oh, you've been there. Oh wait, wrong button. There we go, there we go. Check the portal, huh? Which portal, what are you talking about? What do you mean? What are you, what are you saying? Trying to do him here. YouTube video of the lead developer talking about the new demons from the Marauder. You take out the small demons first before focusing on the big guy. Is that okay? So that's kind of the intended flow with the Marauder. It's not. It's not game destroying. Grid on mouse pad is worse than Cheeto fingers because you try not to do it and it still gets there. And if you play with Cheeto fingers, you need to reevaluate re your life choices. Yeah, you do. It's true. Keep your keep your gaming peripherals clean. All right, guys. Oh, you mean that portal? Love your tools, y'all. This is... This is what we use to create art. Oh no, Hugo's words, the Marauder is Darth Maul to your Obi-Wan. Okay, that kind of makes sense, because... That's the only enemy in the game like that. But if that... If that's their idea, I think I can get it. Um, I just... Why do I keep popping in the air? I think I keep hitting that little thing. What? It's like a little hump that I just keep bopping over? What the hell? Weird. What is... Whatever. I don't know what's going on. My boy's getting hoppy. Oh, watching the Down the Rabbit Hole in the Final Fantasy house? I haven't seen that yet. I need to watch that. I'm not a fan if that was their design idea. That's so contrary to the rest of the game. Yeah... Yeah, I I have to I have to be in more fights on Nightmare, I think, to appreciate it. I don't mind Marauders being like a mini boss. I for it will give you the angle needed to destroy the remaining tentacle. Marauders are also in like what, five, maybe maybe six fights total in the entire campaign. So if that's if that's the case, then there's just like there's some arena fights that deserve a little extra attention to get through. That's weird. But I don't mind it, um, especially if it is it is a conscious design decision of like these fights are going to be different because the Marauder is here. Um, it is it is a little strange that there's so much emphasis put on the single unit, really. But uh, I can live with it. Is it dark? Uh, hmm. no, the game should be the same. Same uh, brightness it always has been. Wow, God. Um, Omniel, thanks for the prime sub, the prime reset, or the prime sub. Never mind. And cross, cross, fug off. <laughs> Thank you for gifting a sub. Blade Runner, nineteen eighty two. Thanks for the prime sub. Solid name, by the way. Solid movie, solid name. Hardest feat was to defeat that thirty second Marauder fight. Oh, is that a uh, like a secret one? This, Hugo, he said they wanted the Marauder to basically be a demon that is on Doom Guy's level, and it seems they succeeded because everyone hates the Marauder. Yeah. It's the first... I respect it a lot more if they know what they were doing, and so much of this game is them knowing what they were doing, so I wouldn't put it... Like, I wouldn't assume that the Marauder was just a big whoopsie. But I can see why it does sort of shatter the, the, the skill-based power fantasy of the game. Because it's the first enemy you can't kill faster if you're better at the game. 
Like, you have to wait. You have to wait. Um, and that's the thing. Why does that keep happening? I keep bopping in the air. It's, it's, it's scaring me. Mostly because of, like, 2016's physics, where you would just kind of fly in the air sometimes and that would get you killed. Hey, Eliana. I did this already, but the message came up now. Oh, the resub? Well, I'm glad you did it. Thank you. Lore! Pick that shit up. Ooh, okay, so this is what I'm really excited about. Because I think this will, in some way, pave over the gap of lore between the end of 2016 and the beginning of Eternal. No Velocibleco. I didn't, I didn't, I haven't been going for very long. Kid Venom and Zubaz, thank you guys for the respective subs. And you started a hype train! So... If you guys have uh, cheers or gifts, now's the time. Uh, now's the time to pay it forward, if ever there was one. While I read some lore, when's the soundtrack coming out? I don't know. I think I think they're they're probably saving that for a PR, a PR beat at this point. <laughs> the destruction of the Argent Wellspring on Mars meant chaos for planet Earth. Following the loss of communication between Earth and Mars-based facilities, the collapse of the Argent-dependent energy grid consumed the planet in crisis. It was during this time that the UAC director, Dr. Samuel Hayden, suddenly resurfaced on Earth before the AN Council, wielding what might offer salvation to mankind, the Crucible. After recounting the events that had transpired on the Red Planet, Hayden agreed to cooperate with the AN, providing access to the various UAC facilities on Earth, and by extension the full range of technologies at his disposal. Paramount among those was the Crucible, the last remaining source of Argent energy in existence. Okay, that kind of adds up. He did say multiple times in 2016 that all of, Earth, all of Earth had become dependent on the near limitless energy that Argent Energy provided, and the Doomslayer did blow it all up. Uh, so, it, I do like them acknowledging that that sent the Earth into chaos, and that he had the only last thing that could produce Argent Energy and try to power the world. Um, thank you guys for all the cheers. I uh, appreciate the use of the cheer mode. It's awesome. I love that little guy. But yeah, Hayden, Hayden is a big, thick boy. Also, totally adds up that he would he would return to Earth and be like, don't worry, I can solve your problems. Yeah, Cinder, that would be cool. Uh, lore DLC that, that captured, or covers the, what? Covers the gap between 2016 and Eternal for the Doomslayer? Because, uh, to, my, to my knowledge, they don't say exactly what happened to him. Or where Hayden sent him at the end of the game. Uh... Some DLC where you play as Hayden? You know, I would say that's I would say that's unlikely, but they have they have parts in the campaign where you play as revenants and shit, so why not? I don't think you can get there from here. <laughs> Cheeto dust on your keyboard making you jump. Maybe. I actually did a, a full like like, toothbrush scrub out of my keyboard uh, about a month ago, so... It should be Cheeto dust-free, but you never can tell. Oh, now we're going. Fuck. Shit. Fuck, I'm in a wall. Oh, oh okay. It's gonna be like that then. He's coming. Oh lord, he come. You have earrings on your keycaps. I don't think so. Fuck. Fuck. Give me something more important to kill, please. All right, that'll do it. Ah. Whoa. 
Damn it! Shit! Let's get out of here. Too cramped up there. God, shit, man. Oh, snakey boy! Shit. Shit, shit, shit. Grr. Shadow! Holy shit, thank you for gifting all the subs, dude! I wish I could acknowledge it more directly. But I don't want to get murdered! Fuck! Huh. Oh! That'll do! I got that pinky behind me. Bonk into the wall. Nothing, huh? Fuck. Cross fug off. Thank you for uh, or cross for fug off. Oh, I was stuck. Oh, I'm on the pinky. Fuck. Fuck. God damn it. Jesus. I'm like, what am I? What's happening? The pinky ran under me. Um, how far am I into the game? Uh, I don't know. Five and six? You can get an emblem by dashing a charging pinky. Getting an emblem? What do you mean by emblem? Because you get emblems by finding them in the world. I don't think you get emblems... You choked? I don't know that counts as choking. Dude, I landed on a pinky. That was an uncommon video game occurrence. I just, it takes some adjustment to how fucking aggressive the AI is in this game, because it, it chases you down, dude. They give you, they give you no space. 2016's AI was actually quite a bit more, uh, lenient. You choked on these nuts. <laughs> that I did. <laughs> oh, it's impossible to be mad playing Doom. Oh! Wow! Come on. Shit, man. I get stuck on stuff a lot in this game. Fuck. Where are the, all the important targets? Ah, where are you? There. Yeah, but also Marauders. Marauders still out there. Fuck. I thought the snake... I thought the snake boy should have been out by now. Andrew! Holy shit, dude! Thanks for the big cheer! Okay, y'all are being ridiculous now. No, I can't die. Can't possibly die. Where is... There's gotta be a medium-sized demon around. But, I don't know where. There's one. There's our boy. Fuck. Huh. My train is in full swing. Thank you so much, guys. That's a big-ass hype train! Whoa! Snakey boys haven't come out yet. Where are they? Oh, there's a guy. Ah, yeah. Fuck. Oh, sneaky girls. Okay. There's more than one one quote unquote female demon in, in Eternal. Wait, no, I think it's just the one. Because summoners aren't around anymore. 
Shit! Shit! Away from that pinky! Stop getting stuck, man. I keep bonking into corners. I think it, like situational awareness is a thing, but. Something big warping in. Oh, another pinky. Definitely keep moving. Ugh. Whew. Is the Marauder just one enemy or an enemy type? It is it is one enemy. That's the it's the dude with the shield and the axe. He's in the trailer. No girls in heck, yeah. Men die so that women don't have to go to heck. There was a teleporter that I never used in this arena. I want a female sentinel to fight the fight hell with. Yeah, it. Yeah, I guess the the argent were all male or something because they don't really really do anything to use the plasma gun other than shield guys. Um, if I'm out of heavy heavy, uh, if I'm out of assault rifle ammo, yeah, I'll use it to stagger enemies. Um, or if there's just a ton of minions that I gotta mow, mow through, it's pretty good for that. But just a brap, like you can just. You can just, just basically spray down a whole group of people and you'll kill them all. It's pretty nice. Where are the demon babies? Good point. Uh, let me get through this, though. So many people really got into that got into that train. Oh! Shadow giving out five more subs. Jesus Christ. So that's... Jesus. You guys are, you guys are throwing around a lot of money. Holy shit. 5400 RPM. Thanks for the sub. Homie Dillis. Good to see you again. Can't watch because I don't want spoilers. Keep up the great work. Thanks for years of entertainment. Thank you. Uh, shame you can't watch, but... Taco Truck Nuts, Andrew, thank you for the cheers again. Ups and Downs, 1892, thank you. Dr. Eleven, appreciate it. El Yondo, thank you, thank you. And Andrew with that big-ass cheer. DJ Birth Control, thank you, good to see you again. Where's this go? Oh, up here? Alright. Oh, it's a one-way? I received level 4 head train! Also, how do I get to that? I want in! How do we get to that? Ah! Oh. I'm gonna wait for this guy to come say hi. Fuck. Level 5! Oh, it just said level 4 for me. Blood punch it? Yeah, too late. I need, I need that room! Argenta definitely had females. The text reference brothers and sisters or sons and daughters about the path of the warrior, the path of the alchemist. That's true. You're right. They're just I guess they could they could be in armor. They're just not wearing lady armor. Was that a shoulder flamethrower? Yeah. Yeah, John, that's one of the one of the upgrades to Doom Eternal. You have a shoulder flamethrower on one side and then a grenade launcher on the other that shoots either ice or fire grenades. Because this game is is just silly. It's just silly. The Urdak are all female? Oh, maybe. 
I mean, Erdak is a place. I don't think they've ever... Erdak is a place that the Maker go to. The director said they had to remove titties because of ad campaigns? Huh. I don't disbelieve you. I'm just curious what the context of that is. Plenty of other ad campaigns have have women's in them. In fact, often women's are added because of ad campaigns. Specifically the snake girl? Huh. Oh, bear titties. Well, yeah, that makes sense. That doesn't mean they had to take out, like, all... All females of all kinds. Yeah. You know what? Girl gamers gotta rise up too. God, the no jumping parts are raunchy. So we just won't do them. Look at you and your st stupid ass AI. I can't even. Free titties or no titties? Those are the only the only two kind allowed. Shamble on over, boys. We're gonna get this battery. John Carmack said no. <laughs> Team guys canonically of all cell? Doesn't that just mean celibate? Dante's Inferno to boss the little aborted fetuses with blades for arms crawling out of her nipples. No one's brave anymore. Yeah, Dante's Inferno was was pretty muddle. Oh, thanks for the reset network, Paladin. Good to see you again. It's um I mean some 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 companies are brave. It just doesn't mean that the game's any good. I mean there's agony. Agony's over there. Also, I don't think Dante's Inferno sold worth a damn, so. I've been catching bits of lore on streams as FPS games aren't my jam. It's a great game though. Love watching people who are doing super well and having fun. Oh, you're, you weren't saying that's me. Well, I don't know. Yeah, Agony wasn't a good game. That's the thing, is like, it's rare to have the intersection of like legitimate development talent plus edginess for edginess's sake. I thought the original God of War was was pretty great in that regard. Like I'm missing something. No, everything seems cleaned out. Satan had big dick energy and literal big dick. Yeah. Oh, did Ag did Agony actually sell pretty well? Yeah. What was that other one? Hatred, the like top-down shooter, the the mass shooting simulator. I mean, there's also like Rape Play and a bunch of other edgy try-hard games. That are kind of like, like ban bait. If you ban me, then I get to say I'm getting censored, and then I get free PR off the back of that. Ah. Come on. There it is. What? You can't lock me out of lore. How dare they? How? There they. Do they even know who they're dealing with? Yeah, it is. It is a. I'll, I'll admit it is a bit of a false comparison putting putting Rayplay and and like League with those other things. But yeah, I do. Re Doesn't he have like a horse dick too? It's like a Pringles can and it's kind of hairy. I think I thought it was meant to look like a goat. You thought you could keep the lore from me. Please be part two. Yes! Whoa. Sick. <sighs> what a show of power and how little it meant. Yeah, exactly. Exactly soft drink evening. Uh, could you sum up the story so far for people like me who haven't been able to follow it all the way through? Woo! So do you mean just for Eternal or for 2016? Um, tell you what, I'll, I'll try to bottom line everything. Um, it's in the near future. Uh, people, people poking around on Mars find a crack in a trench, really deep, and there's like energy flowing out of it, like really hot energy. It's like bright, hotter than the sun somehow. 
So they basically build a whole, uh, the UAC builds a whole energy production plant on top of it. Uh, but people started acting a little weird. Turns out this energy was making people go crazy. They started hearing whispers and basically getting invaded by demons. Uh, the UAC finds a way to go through the crack, basically into whatever dimension this energy is coming from. Turns out it's hell. There's demons there. It's crazy. Um, but the UAC kind of keeps this under under wraps because the, the, the energy stream coming out of this place is so intense that they can basically power the entire planet. They become Earth's sole power provider while also kind of becoming brainwashed because of demonic energy. Um, have they explained why the Argent energy was coming out of Mars originally? No. Um, the origin of that is they just had rovers that found a crack. Um, found a crack in the ground that this shit was coming out of. Um, that is... Nobody, nobody really knows why the crack was there or why it was on Mars. Um, <clears throat> so then everyone goes crazy. Uh, because they are literally demonically possessed. Um, in the middle of this, they also find a sarcophagus in hell. Uh, they... they Pop it out, they bring it back to the UAC facility, and that's where Doom 2016 begins. You wake up in that sarcophagus as the Doom Slayer, and you start to kill demons, because that's what the Doom Slayer does. Uh, over the course of Doom 2016, you kill Olivia Pierce, who was, like, the head of the satanic cult in the UAC. Um, you collapse the portal on Mars to prevent a full-scale invasion of this reality by the forces of hell. All right. And at the end of 2016, Samuel Hayden, this gentleman here, and the CEO of the UAC... Um, basically, they imply that he kind of, like, puts you out of the way because he doesn't want you destroying all Argent energy, which is the hell energy that has been capitalized on. In Eternal, you wake up in a floating castle around the planet Earth and set to killing all the hell priests, which are the, basically, the, like, magic, uh, generals that are coordinating the invasion of Earth. Earth has been invaded, 80% of you, the, uh, the human race is dead, but somehow you as the, the Doom Slayer are back in business, killing demons. And uh, part of the mystery is figuring out what happened between the end of 2016 and Eternal. And then another part of the mystery is who's controlling the demons, what is Argent Energy, where did it come from, who are the maker, because they're involved now. Learning more about the history. Oh, uh, another brief side thing that I forgot to mention. The hell that they found in through the portal on Mars wasn't actually hell or rather it became hell it was actually a civilized it was civilized by another ancient race another ancient like super advanced race they became super advanced because they were kind of stewarded by another uh is maker singular or plural it's plural um i think it's implied there are several maker but it could just be the one or they could just be like they're they're it may just be like a collective consciousness thing how much did they did they say how much time has passed between 2016 ending and now not really, but enough time for Hayden to come back and try and organize an entire military force that failed. So, six months is maybe a reasonable assumption, maybe less, maybe more. Um, after you solve all that mystery, are you going to do a, make a Vati-style vid YouTube video? I don't know. We'll see. Somebody else, I'm sure, has already done it. Um, but essentially, yes. The problem is now that there is a there is a third race. So you got humans, demons, the Argenta who is an ancient race that died, and you found the ruins of their civilization after it had been invaded by hell. And now there's the Maker, who supplied the Argenta with a lot of their technology. But something's weird. If the, if the Maker had the Argenta's back, why were they conquered by hell? The implication of this game is that the Maker and the forces of hell are working in concert because human life, or life in general, is a very powerful energy source when it's tortured and harvested. Uh, and that's what demons do. They are a tool to go in on habited planets and basically harvest life from that planet and turn it into power that then fuels maker society. That is the idea. Um, and you as the Doomslayer are killing demons because you hate demons. There's more about the Doomslayer's backstory that I will actually probably be seeing here in a second. So now you're not only defying the will of the demons who really want to kill hum humans that's just what they do but also the maker who are basically using the demons as a tool um the makers specifically want that energy because it makes them immortal yes uh yes that is the implication um or i think it literally says that again it's basically jupiter ascending uh two years between 2016 and eternal according to wikipedia okay that sounds about right i am just fascinated to death about what the doomslayer was up to in that time if because it 
it implies pretty heavily that uh, Sam Hayden put him back in stasis, which is how 2016 started. He was like entombed in a sarcophagus with runes and shit. Um, but they don't ever say. And they don't say how he gets out. Yeah, it's the Thicket Smith. God, that lore shit is wild. So, Home Guard, that's what we're looking at. None of that matters if you play the game because they just shove a gun in your hands and say, go kill. Um, but they did put a lot of effort into fleshing out and definitely hinting at bigger lore pictures, which Eternal is delivering a lot on. I want to know why they have King Novik go tell him to go rip and tear at the beginning, but when you meet him, he's like, no, don't do it. It's possible the line at the beginning was him. I think if, if, I, if I read the context, that sounds like it's what he said to Doomslayer and the Night Sentinels when they sent them into the breach to go destroy the Hellforge. You know, the, the big uh, turnabout that basically led to the downfall of the Argenta race. I could see uh, King, King Novik being like, you're going to go do this thing, rip and tear until it's done. Like, we're about to end this war. Little does he know, he, his ass got betrayed. I, uh, that's me reading a lot into it, but yeah. I, to me, it's, I think those are lines from two different points of history. What is Doomslayer's origin? Riley, this game actually pretty much puts a point on that. We'll get, we'll get there in a minute, I think. <clears throat> Why use torture when it's proved laughter is a better power source? They haven't gotten there yet. They haven't gotten to the third act of Monsters Incorporated. Okay, I'm excited to read this. Um, believing it is possible to solve the energy crisis, which now devastated the planet, Dr. Hayden sought to in invent a method of Argent synthesis, a synthetic replication that could recreate the high-yield capability of Argent energy. With the destruction of the Argent energy across the solar system, all that remained of Argent now existed within the Crucible. <clears throat> the fabled Hell artifact which Dr. Hayden had acquired on Mars. Knowing full well the Crucible's hidden power, Samuel devised a method to utilize the artifact as an Argent conductor, a process that would in time produce the miracle of synthetic man-made Argent energy, restoring the production of Argent energy to Earth. Hmm. Never heard somebody say the full name of the movie before? Or the movie, yeah. <clears throat> Not Monsters, Inc. Monsters Incorporated, yeah. Hayden became a mythical figure among Earth's survivors, in no small part to his abnormal physical condition. Having, return, having returned to Earth when most sought a means to escape, bringing with him the crucible that would grant the people a second chance for survival. For the common person, he had become the stuff of legends. Yeah. Ah, welcome back, Soul Dunlop. Yeah, sorry you missed out on, uh, on submitting for media share earlier, but there's always next week. If you remember by then, a lot going on these days. Ooh, a mystery, but also question mark. Oh, hell yeah, man. Quake 2 soundtrack is awesome. <clears throat> Has the word ad adrenochrome been used yet? Not that I know of. The whole Doom guy doesn't care about you or the story, just wants to kill is bullshit. He cares about saving innocence and protecting Earth. That's the implication. The lines that other people say imply that he cares about saving. He's not very nice about it, though. Not that he needs to be, but he's definitely got that Terminator sensibility of, like, he's not going to... Like, he's not a Jesus type. Um, there's also... I think you can... Oh, I missed a life. I think you can read... I mean, this game kind of leans more into his motivations, I think, if you interpret them and... Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. I think his vindictive attitude over Bears' his want to save people? I think so. I think it's like, he, he wants to save people, but as a result, he resents and hates the forces that prevent him from doing that so much that he wants to murder them all with, like, a blinding rage. So, hope you do this much into a review of Tiger King. What is Tiger King? Yeah, I just I just saw that on Netflix today when I went in to, to kick on Castlevania again when I was working out this morning. He's more like Marvel's Punisher? Yeah, I think, I would say a, a very extreme version of Marvel's Punisher. Um, 2016 had a lot of subtle touch, touches showing his emphatic hate for the UAC's endangerment of the world. Yeah. I mean, his, his not giving a shit when Hayden's telling him not to blow everything up is part of that. Uh, yeah. One moment. 
override successful. You and Bruce still talk? Of course, every week. The path is now clear. You can access Dr. Hayden's Uh, Curie friend, we have a podcast where we talk uh, in a very visible and publicly posted way. Using the unicorn, unicorn skin? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Architecture. He just wants his rabbit still? Yeah. I have old theory and I'm waiting for us to get further into the game to say it. Yeah, I've got my theories too. I mean, uh, it does it does seem like they're doing the John Wick thing a little bit, but... Yeah. Yeah, Cinder, I I agree, but I get why they did it. Um, it doesn't ruin it for me. I do kind of wish that they had done something else, though. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. Make you do these fights in a really narrow hallway that you can't touch the walls in. Yeah. They do try to hit you with a bunch of combat scenarios, which is what makes me a little more permissive of the, the Marauder. I just want Doomguy back into the mix. Nuke Liar, just, just be patient. Just be patient. Wow, ah, what? Wow, ah, what, hap what happened? I like went to the wall. Fuck. Why does it, like, you stick so hard on walls? It's like you have to overcome your own momentum when you're getting away from them. You call him Flynn Taggart? Well, that was his name from the novels, right? That is, that is, was, was his commonly accepted canonical name. Uh, from the novels or the comic? One of those two. They call him Doom Guy in this. Well, they call him a lot of things. They call him Doom Guy, Doom Slayer. They don't, they don't call him Flynn, but I'm pretty sure there is an Easter egg in the game that acknowledges that, based on what somebody else said in a previous stream. God, ugh. This soundtrack is so dirty. Doom Guy too had canonical names. He's also a Blaskovich defendant. Our descendant. Yeah, no, the Blaskovich thing came from Doom RPG, right? That was much later. What's the podcast name? Talk to the internet. Uh, but if you use the podcast command, or just that, yeah. Um, hopefully, you can find something that makes that works for you. Yeah, they're about to call him a god. The only thing they fear is him. We watched as the horde overwhelmed the very best and most advanced machinery and weapons technology. I'm just gonna burn it out so it recharges. Against the opposition. It was... Grouse Chimp, thanks for the Prime sub. They moved. When are you done? Want to play Jackbox TV? I have Dick Discord. Somebody else in chat might, but I'm good. They were willing to sacrifice their... I usually, when I'm done streaming, I usually go spend time with Steph. Of all the world, we slaughtered thousands and millions more followed. But then he came. <laughs> Dr. Wet Panties? Cut through them like... Uh, Frankenstein, this is normal nightmare. I would not be this far if this were ultra nightmare. He is faster, more relentless. I. Doom is a shared universe with Wolfenstein. Yeah, it. It used to be. It may still be. Just a man. He is. Doom. That's the thing. Is like there used to be a bunch of very small Easter eggs that tie things together, but the story of Wolfenstein and Doom didn't matter until Doom 2016. And the Wolfenstein stories were pretty self-contained too, so... Yeah, they said the thing! Oh! Title card! Oh, shit.
I gotta learn to use those cue balls more. There's no reason not to. That's why this is Superman 4, the quest for peace, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, BJ never said the name of the game out loud. Looks like we gotta go back to Wolfenstein. I love the voice actor they got for BJ, man. Uh, that perfect, like, raspy corn pone southern drawl. It's so, so good. I need to, I think I want to get the Ice Bomb upgrade specifically for the Marauder. I'm glad they tried to connect him with this game. But what's the timeline connection with the old games that they still took place in the 2000s? I mean, so Connor, um, spoilers. The game implies that at the end of Doom 2, he was thrown back 15,000 years. And has been killing demons ever since, so. Or killing demons until he got put in a sarcophagus and then woke up in Doom 2016. Oh yeah, this part. This part's neat. Oh, at the end of Doom 64. Oh, okay. I gotta, man, I gotta play 64 then. I never finished it. I'll be in here now. Fuck it. <laughs> Oh, Country Brumac. I remember saying your name before. Because I remember uh, thinking that I hadn't heard the word Brumac in a long time. Or maybe the thing that gave him his unstoppable power and speed made him immortal? Could be. Could be. Uh, he doesn't seem to age. IRL name is Connor. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, Doom 64 was really good. Uh, in terms of it holding up, it, it does hold up. If you have a certain temperament for shooters, it's not very straightforward. And it, like, the map design is even more kind of puzzly than um, Doom 2, which was already getting pretty out there. So, yeah, Doom 64 was well after Doom 2. Oh! Yeah, Doom 3 was, was its own thing. I mean, it was a reboot in the way that 2016 was. And then 2016, or sorry, and then Eternal actually kind of linked those things together. So, yeah. Doom 3 is, is, I guess, at this point, the only outlier? Shit. And yeah, also, it's really hard. <laughs> uh... You, you'll If you try to play Doom 64 now, you'll probably get stuck a lot. You'll get lost. You won't know where to go. There'll be some door that you have to open by, like, standing on a, plat a platform and shooting a vent, and it won't be at all obvious what you're intended to do. Um, but it's it's extremely moody. If you're patient, I feel like that's a, that's a really good game to play. I'll probably go through that on stream at some point. So made by, like... Made by Midway? I think it was developed in Chicago? I like Doom 3 and I only played it last summer. Doom 3 still it still holds up. I, th I think Doom 3 is like... It's really fascinating because in, in all the ways that this game tries to not be... Or embraces being a video game and in the ways that it it's kind of more similar to Doom 1 and 2 in that regard. Um, Doom 3 is definitely trying to be more of a new AAA game. Slower, more atmospheric, more dialogue, more story environments that seem more laid out for actual humans and not video games. Uh, will you play Doom 3? I actually did a, I did a long time ago. I played... I was one of the first things when I started streaming more regularly I did. I did like a whole modded playthrough of Doom 3. This is Dr. Elena Richardson. Log entry is zero, zero. Is there a reason you put them on fire before using the melee finisher? Yes. Enemies that are on fire drop armor. So if, if my flame belch, which is the flamethrower, cooldown is up, and I'm low on armor, there's no reason to not just flame them up right before you kill them. March 3rd, 2163. And with him lies our salvation. Connecting it with Doom fucks it up so much. Yeah, by the end it starts to feel more like a normal Doom game. It should be on YouTube. Yeah, Amadora. Way back. Uh, maybe I wasn't uploading to YouTube by then, but it should be there. Uh, the expansion for Doom 3 
got it way closer to like Doom through Doom flavor. Um, so everyone that hated Doom three, sh I kind of hope that they stuck around for the expansion, but attackers and those that would seek to harm us should feel warned. For there is only one dominant life form in this universe. Put it on YouTube, Doom three. I should have. I hope I hope I did. That was like four years ago. Hail the coming of the Destroyer. The Slayer's time is now. Oh, you haven't seen it? Ugh, okay. It might be gone then. Well, who knows? Maybe it's time for another playthrough of Doom 3. That game's not not super long, and it's not... It's a pretty it's a pretty smooth ride, too. And it looks... With, like, some mods and stuff, it looks pretty good. It brushes up really well. Like most of its software games, that it, it is just on really solid tech. Eh, why do I keep popping up in the air? What is... That is really, really strange. Yeah, there's just like little inconsistencies in the ground that are starting to flick me up. Well, they haven't been happening in combat, so... Looks like I got all the, all the pick upables too, so... She's really into the Slayer. Yeah, I mean, they did... There was another line in the game about how like... Oh wow, this is like... What a typical way to end a Doom level. Um, there was a line about how now that humanity is facing this like biblical extinction that everyone is sort of turning more religious, kind of. They're getting much more spiritual in their beliefs and, and their hopes about what will save them. So... Dr. Hayden's office laboratory is located at the top of this facility. Those lines kind of make sense. Emergency protocols have been activated. Please exit the facility now. Tier 3 Doom Guy sub. Oh. My god! Um... Oh, there are women's in Doom Eternal. So, I'm starved for these little lines about what Hayden did and was thinking. Um, I like that Hayden knew. Even though Hayden tried to put the Doomslayer away and took his crucible, he's like, he's gonna come back for it. Just say that it is an honor for me personally to meet you. I <laughs> don't worry, you'll get there. I uh. So I've already played through the game once, but I didn't pay very close attention to the lore the first time through. Emergency protocols have I was activated. trying to, uh, exit the facility now. trying to get it finished for review. This fucking guy. We, uh, we don't know how to access his main cortex. It's all alien. We couldn't figure it out. We have to, uh, prepare for his careful... Tarples, I wanted a little more of Hayden, too. I feel like it was lame that... The second he comes back into the game, all he does is, like, nag you. He's like, now, Doom Guy, you can't go doing that! And then he goes and does it, and Hayden's like, Aw, oh, you can't do that, Doom Guy! Ah. I was I was really hoping for a lot. So that's interesting, because that's like the Slayer symbol, but it's, it's different. So I guess these are, like, corrupted Argenta Sentinels? Because he has an Argent Accumulator, too. They imply pretty heavily that Slayer uh, absorbs the life energy of the demons he kills, and that's why he's getting stronger and faster. Oh, he's got the wolf too. Okay. They're sentinels who sided with the con maker. Makes sense. Let me help you to see Slayer. All right. Fuck. Fuck. Shit. I'm already... I'm getting, getting like... Clutch, uh, glory kills is the most fucking important thing. So, running out of shotgun shells. Jesus Christ. Super shotgun, ballista, and shoot. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do, trying to do some other combos on him, just so I can figure out how to maximize damage. Shit, man. Fucking dog. Ah. Huh. Why did they give him a dog? That's not a. There. No, I, I have the slop. That's not what I'm working on right now. I want to. I want to. What the fuck? Okay, so you can't freeze him. I'm. I'm labbing right now. I'm not just trying to kill him. 
Believe me, I I played 2016. I know how to swap from the shotgun to the to the Gauss rifle. He only spawns dog if you're too far away. Uh, I mean, you have to you have to get away from him though sometimes if you need ammo and there's nobody around. Fuck. Oh, and I use my blood punch too. I was not far away from him there. Damn it! Mm. You play Control. If so, is it worth $24? It's absolutely worth $24, yeah. There are suggestions that Hayden is multiple steps ahead because he is Maker Tech. So. Yeah, he's similar white and ceramic plate looking armor. The callback to Doom 2016, the first Argent chest. Uh, a lab tech called Hayden's Tech Alien just now. I don't, I wouldn't read too much into that, the alien line. I think that's just mean they don't understand the technology in there. Um, because there's also a lot that was fueled by Argent technology that doesn't quite understand. Uh, it just froze. Great. Um, is the super shotgun implied Argenta tech of the Marauders have them or did they copy the Doom guy? Well, I mean, I am using a, uh, I am using a maker skin on the super shotguns. So that's a bit of a, that's a bit of a tell, isn't it? Hold on, I'll, I'll, let me update the text. Yeah, I'm doing it. Okay, that's the important thing. I'm really excited to, uh, I'm really, really excited to, to figure out Marauders. Even if it is just, like, just figuring out the most efficient way to deal with them. Hayden's transfer had Argent energy being used. Hmm. There's fairly convincing stuff about Hayden being the Seraphim. Ah. Uh, EXZ, thank you for the Prime sub. If that's the case, though, that doesn't really explain, like, his life as a human. They... He was a normal human. And he talks like too much of a human to... No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. <laughs> There's lore about him in 2016 that talks about his human life as a human being. <laughs> he was always Dr. Roboto. No, he wasn't. My man, I've read all the lore. In 2016, at least. Yeah, he was a human being. He got cancer, and he invented a robot body for himself and transported part of his brain into it. Huh. Ow! God, that comes out so fucking fast! God, that shit comes out so quick! God! Oh. He was a computer with cancer, so he invented it. He was a... Yeah, he's a human with cancer. What is your opinion with, with Marauders? I don't know, man. The, uh... But like that's that shit comes out so quickly. Christ. And like the fact that he'll t he'll tag you with damage that you can't really prevent. Um But yeah. It's, it's like managing, managing ammo and health. Uh, it seems like side strafing, if you constantly side strafe, you can at least nullify his stupid slash attack. Because when it's at close range, it's nearly impossible to dodge. Um, I don't know. These guys. Okay, that's what, that's what they looked like pre, pre-corruption. Man, that's so sick. Very gladiatorial. Very, like, 300. Like, elite warrior class that has just has exposed chest. Seems like he creamed him just now. If you get a good run on him, yeah. If you can get, like, four or five staggers in a row, but it's not, mm. Found it easiest to clear him, get a few hits, then clear again when demons respawn. It takes a while, but it's safer. <sighs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm curious. Yeah, it's, it's managing everything. Like, if you take a couple of... Take a couple of hits, then you have to go find a minion, which means you have to look away from the fucker, which means he can spawn a wolf. He can he can like do all sorts of things while you're not looking. It's kinda wild. Yeah, just don't die, forehead, basically. 
Thought I had Marauders figured out, and then I found the secret challenge where you fight one and can't even get close to killing it in time? Man. Yeah, you gotta be fast. You got to be fast. Uh, Mitch, there was only one Doomslayer. The, the Marauders were Knight Sentinels, which were elite warriors that the Doomslayer fought with. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of wild. Oh, here we go. More lore, okay. As civil war consumed Argent and Nur, the Knight Sentinel's guard was quartered by their faith. Torn between serving the Khan Maker or revolting against that which they swore to protect. Um, those... Oh, thank you, Sneaky Yardwark. For the cheers. Are Night Sentinels human? No, they're Argenta, but they look human. <laughs> Ledford Guy, thanks for the prime sub. Those most disillusioned forswore their oath to the, Sentinel, to the Sentinel royalty, abandoning their pact of allegiance made to the throne. These hardened warriors joined the Separatist group led by the exalted priest class, allying themselves with the Makers and their devout acolytes in an attempted coup against the Sentinel Royal House. Those Sentinel warriors who fell in battle, having sided with the Makers, were ultimately denied finality in death. Resurrected by the divinity machine of Maker design, these fallen Sentinels were returned from the dead, transformed by Hell's power, and recreated with a singular purpose, to hunt the Slayer, now reborn as Knights in Hell's army. Cool. All right. Doom Slayer was the big dick leader of the armies, but the king was above all sentinels, if I'm remembering right. Yes. But the Slayer also kneels in fealty to king, the king, um, but then also defies him. So there's there's some of that still in there. Uh, Ledford Guy, thanks for the prime sub. Did the Doom Slayer lead the sentinels once he was, he was adopted into their culture? Yes. There's some lore about how the Doom Slayer just sort of appeared, uh, presumably after the end of Doom 64, and through his sheer battle intensity... Like one respect in the the Colosseums, basically, and then were then was put in the fighting force with the Sentinels, then eventually led the Sentinels because he murdered everybody. Have you beat this yet? I don't want to spoil. I have, yes, but I didn't. I didn't really root out all the lore the first time around, so I'm I am familiar with a lot of the very obvious beats of the of the narrative. Since there were good Sentinels, does that mean they were given death? Why they give us Praetor tokens? Yeah, I guess so. The Sentinels that were loyal to the King and did not fall. Oh, is, is Sentinel Prime the next level? Yeah, that's that's where the that's where the big the big cannon drops are. So they were very explicit. Why did I get zero experience? Jeez. Um The uh I remember like the embargo information was very explicit that you were not allowed to show any shit from Sentinel Prime. Dialogue like up next is pretty telling. Yeah, I'm excited about I'm you have now destroyed sixty-eight percent of Hell's occupying force. Without the priests, <laughs> Winterheart, thank you for the sub. Hey, dude, that's plenty. You don't have to left, and I have lost. discount a good prime sub here and there. Yes, Nuke Liar. That is that is the gist of the story as As Eternal seems to be setting it up. The architecture is similar to his own, so yeah. Pretty de pretty definitively a maker tell though. Priest is hiding in Sentinel Prime. The Khan Maker does not want him to be easily found. The only functional slipgate to Sentinel Prime is in the core of Mars. Oh never mind. The lost city of Hibbert. This this level is awesome. Sentinel Prime is the one after. It's location for you, but getting there will take time. There is no easy way to access the core of Mars. There are no known pathways that lead there, Dr. Hayden. The BFG-10,000, designed by Dr. Samuel Hayden as part of the anti-demonic defense grid. I understand. Searching the coordinates to the BFG-10,000 now. You can't just shoot a hole into the surface of Mars. Yeah, I was bummed that, like, the f ready. the first thing they do with Hayden is make him nag you so that you feel even cooler when you do it. Like, shut up, Dad. Like, ah, Hayden's cooler than that. Hayden's got more going on than that. Um, There is, if you really want to read into it, if you really want to read into it, then... Hayden doesn't miss a beat because he knew all this was going to happen. He's like, I'm going to go back to Earth and I'm going to lose. And then Slayer is going to come for me. And then so when he wakes up on the ship, he's like, yeah, okay. This is what I thought would happen. And he's immediately like, okay, let's go get those hell priests. I don't know, though. That, that still doesn't... I don't know. That's... 
Mm. Uh, there's just, there's, I don't know, there's better ways to do it, <laughs> I feel like. Um, although I, I can't quite blame the game because the game's philosophy is always like, we're not going to shove plot in the face of people who don't want it. Um, so we're just going to have the NPCs, as far as the story's concerned, the NPCs are there to tell you where to go and where the demons are to kill. Um, so, yeah. You see the critical role Doom Eternal one-shot. They had Darren DePaul on to mock the party who were playing demons as Samuel Hayden. That's, that's pretty cool. That's a neat tie-in. So, let's see. Suit. Yeah, we're gonna want this boy. Oh, wait, you can't, you can't freeze the Marauder. It's, it's weird, too, because there are, like, everything about the Marauder screams freeze me. But you can't, because he just unfreezes himself immediately. And I think that's the only enemy in the game that does that. That will just be like, nope, I don't get frozen. It's hidden in anything else. Doom 2016, but that's a... 2005 movie, what? I mean, that'd be cool, but... What do you think the DLCs will be about? Ah. I mean, it could really be anything. The way that this game ends, they pretty much left it open for whatever. Oh, his VA. Oh! I didn't know that. That's awesome. Ah. Darren DePaul. Uh, Wombat Duck. Hayden VA is also Reinhardt from Overwatch. Yeah. Pretty fucking talented guy. I, uh... Personally, I think it'd be cool to... I mean, you could have fill-in DLC of, like, uh, of the Slayer's, the Slayer's Misadventures in between, um, Doom 64 and Doom 2016. Um, they already have some level assets and stuff made from those areas that he would have been in, and the time periods he would have, so some of that work's already done, which to me makes it more likely that it would be DLC, if it's already, like, half-made or you can borrow assets. Let's see. Jeez, with the list. Thank you, buy with the microwave. Bleh. Rocket launcher lock on, okay. Frozen demons with blood punch. Seems pretty easy. Not only detonate to kill pinkies. Alright. Did you ever use that giant suit or did I miss it already? No, I don't you don't get to use it in this game. At least not that I'm aware of. Maybe there's maybe there's some righteous uh Easter egg where you get to. Hope they don't do some dumb twist by making Samuel Hayden evil at the end. No, I think he's pretty beyond that. I think I think Hayden is at a point where it's like he might do things that appear evil, but that's because his his view is so so much bigger picture. Would you agree that 2016 had appeal of showing but not telling? Uh, I mean it, it still told. It was just all in text logs. I think 2016's appeal was that there was clearly a lot of effort put into put into both having something going on behind the scenes but only showing you half of it. I think that's more what it is. It's like they had they had beats worked out, but they didn't just tell tell them all to you. Uh, they were in there but implied for people who were paying attention, like just just enough to pique your interest. And now um, this game is basically paying off the people who were paying attention by. Answering some questions and then leaving other ones open. Which I think is, is the perfect way to do it. That's exactly how you do it. Ah! Fuck! Shit. What the? Ah. Shit. Oh, you're a revenant. Shit. Oh. Ah! God damn it, I hit the fucking wall. Ah! Shit. Ah! Can't be missing shots like this. Oh, 
shit. Uh, I really need to chainsaw something, but I needed health first. There is something I can chainsaw. Yeah. A lot of... Uh. Where are you? Uh, I wonder if Hayden was aware that humans fuel Argent energy when he was wanting the Doomslayer not to destroy Argent Tower. That's a really good question. Does he know that that Argent energy slash essence are people or life, um, and how it's produced? Because it's pretty inhumane. Uh, I would argue the first character he probably doesn't care, um, or rather he's like, we're not going to worry about that. The energy's there, so we need to use it. It's Shades of fossil fuels. Oh, Cyber! Thank you for the thank you for the resub. You like your cybernetic name? He most likely knew. Yeah, if if you're going if you're running with the idea that he is like in the loop on Maker Tech, then he has to know because the makers are the ones who are orchestrating everything, right? Why did Hayden betray the Slayer at the end of sixteen? Because he knew that the Slayer was going to break everything. He knew that the Slayer was going to destroy Argent Energy in the solar system. Um, to kill all the demons. And he didn't want that. Also, he knew that the Earth was already in a position of absolutely relying on that means of uh, energy production. So, the, the, uh, the, the lore in the game does, does acknowledge, and actually we just, just read it, it does acknowledge that um, Earth did get kind of fucked by the Slayer destroying everything, which also kind of, to me... Reveals the Slayer's rel not or moral absolutism, I guess, which is kill demons. Um, he may want to save people, but not that much. Because um, he didn't really care, or, or maybe you could argue that he understood more the demonic threat than Hayden did. But he did kind of throw the entire Earth into, like, disarray. Arc personnel have reported Lawful stupid paladin. Dr. Hayden's tower <laughs> and has retrieved his remains. We do not know why. Unnamed sources inside the organization claim that Dr. Hayden anticipated the Slayer's arrival. We can only hope that this is true and that the resistance can continue. Uh, Alex Rod, you like to, you like uh, you like your lore more simple? Yeah, I mean, I it's it's a soft pitch, but you really don't have to care about the lore to, to enjoy this game. Um, there's there's a lot like Eternal. There's tons going on. There wasn't so much going on in 2016. Um, also, I like how they have this stupid little runway for you to start levels with. That's cute. I don't think Doomslayer wanted anything from Hell coming into contact with humanity, even Argent. I think you're right. But he's very absolute about that, you know? Whereas Hayden is more like, well, hold on. Now, hold on. <laughs> Everything is running on this right now. Yeah, Captains, you're right. Um, it's pretty clear that he... Whether or not he even thought about it that much, considers the loss of Argent energy to not be as bad as demons murdering everyone. Which, he's right, um, as evidenced by the game, but... Yeah, this scene is so cool. <laughs> I, uh... When they showed this, I was like, are we gonna get one of these in, like, every level? There's gonna be some... There's gonna be some sequence, like, leaning into how cool the Doomslayer is, which would have been a little overbearing. I'm glad that they just kept it to this. And then just straight Terminator vibes. Give me your pants. <laughs> Turning Chads into betas, yeah. <laughs> the entrance to the BFG ten thousand is just across from this facility. Like how he puts a clip in it? Like that's something that ever happens in this game? Is Reloading. Source of the BFG 10,000 should be of interest to you as well. Oh, it's a mag. Yeah, sorry. I mean, it's a battery. We don't know what it is. It's plasma? This, 
I mean, the things you pick up are little purple... Little, like, little purple lunchable packs, so it's... <laughs> he already had a plasma gun. Maybe they had that sequence earlier in the game and decided to move it around. Who okay, knows? If anyone lore re in here, it's me. They call them energy cells? Yeah. Oh, right, I forgot. I gotta be. Oops. <laughs> I forgot. I gotta shoot heads. He says as he shoots a shoulder. Whoa! Oh wait, I forgot to look at the also the challenges for this level. Oh! The BG, cool. So three arm cannons, easy, slayer key, easy. Alright. Huh? Come on! What are you doing? Jeez. In front of the game are you? Uh I don't know. Level seven, eight, something like that. Half? No, Axelrod, you're, you're correct. This game pretty much 100% confirms it's the same Doom Slayer from 1, 2, and 64. Which is... which absolutely happens in the next level. You can... you can fucking... You can freeze anybody except the Marauder. Bleh! Like, this is what they look like, and that ain't what he slammed into that gun. Yeah, Doom 3 Doom Guy. I like Doom 3 a lot, but does Doom 3 make any actual lore of anything? Not really. And and to be fair, it's not like it's a fucking... It's not like there's some grand tapestry of, of writing occurring. Like, the links that they did in Fast and Furious were a little more elegant and interesting than in this. In this, they're just like, hey, yeah, it's him. That's it. And it's not like it's connecting him to any significant lore of any kind. Doom 1, 2, and 64 didn't have stories. They just didn't. Which is fine. They didn't need them. You know what? Doom Eternal doesn't either. So it's not like... I don't know. It's it's not worth caring about. Um, yeah, Doom, Doom 3 is random marine. The only flaw is a flashlight mechanic. I don't even think that's a flaw. I think that's, that's in there for a reason. And it actually makes it a better game. But that's... That's just me. I feel like in the ways that people might get a little graded by the uh, limited ammo pools of Eternal. Same thing with same thing with Doom Three. They want you to make decisions about what you do, and since that game had dynamic, like actual dynamic and model lighting, um, using light was important. It was a game about light, um, so light's not important if you can see all the time. So they have very they have like pitch black areas. Holy shit, this song though. But the um but your guns cast actual light when you shoot, which was a whole new thing. So there are cool very cool sequences in Doom 3 where you're in a pitch black hallway fighting demons, and the only way you can see them is by the flashing of your gun. Like you can actually use your muzzle flash to kind of light up where demons are. Also, like imps and stuff would have glowing eyes, so you'd still be able to see where they are. It's just I don't know. I thought I thought I thought Doom 3 was really smart and I thought it leaned into it made mechanic around its light technology which is kind of an id software thing just in general so I think it's fine but it's not fast uh, that's the that's kind of the big thing I think it also kind of came out in a time when shooters weren't very fast like arena shooters just weren't around anymore like, Painkiller was the best arena shooter we had when Doom 3 hit. So that was their attempt to make it more palatable to a console audience. I get that. But I, I think there's...
I think there's wisdom in how they did it. Shouldn't have had the do name. I kind of agree with that. Um, I get why they did it. Um, it's so market. It's like super marketable. People remember Doom. God. Warning. BFG 10,000 is fired. Team 3 is a fierce style horror shooter? Yeah. I think... I agree with that. I, uh... I still like it a lot. I think it's got fun shooting. It just doesn't throw you into arenas with 30 demons. The expansion kind of does. Uh, which not a lot of people stuck around for, but I thought the expansion for Doom 3... It has way more... It has, like, you go to hell, and it, like, it just feels like Doom again. You get into arenas that are just, like, wide open with, like, columns in them. Um, yeah, the, the expansion was, was really sick, um, but I think most people are just kind of not on board at that point. Oh, Ultra, or Ultra Nightmare doesn't have extra lives? Because there's another mode that does. So there's, there's extra life mode, which you can then play on Nightmare, which is essentially Ultra Nightmare, but with lives. So, it's in the game, it's just not Ultra Nightmare. Yeah, Ultra Nightmare, you gotta just beat it without dying. Ah, uh, of course. Please, why aren't you? Thank you. God damn. Fuck. Fuck, man. Uh. Jesus. What got me? Oh, you're just on my ass, huh? I didn't think you were that fast. Nice. The entrance is locked. They know. The energy ten thousand is firing. The schematics show a maintenance hatch on the bridge. Delightful. Like the Doom Hunter here was made weaker. Yeah, it, I mean it definitely has less life than the boss versions you fight. But Finn sixty nine, thank you for the prime sub. Chunkster one thousand four, thanks. Have you fought a Marauder yet? Yes, just did at the end of the last level. He fucked me up twice, and then I dealt with him pretty quick. So that's been my experience with Marauders, though, man. Sometimes they would just murder you and murder you and murder you, and then you just wipe the floor with them, just because you get a good series of uh, of sh shotgun blasts. Um, I'm super hydrated though. I gotta take a quick break. So we'll be back in a second. I'll be back with you guys in just a minute. Uh, Shadow. Some of them are home videos for me. Yes. Uh, there are, on occasion, I will find a... We'll find a peaceful scene or something, and, and I'll just film like a 90 second loop of it. And then I'll include that in uh, the video rolls. So, that was New Zealand, yeah. So, almost Australia. Oh, there's something back here. Thought you could hide from me, pick up. It's not expecting an audio response. Well, you got it. You're a, a card-carrying diamond member of, of the Law Dogs. Retrieve the power source? So wait, the power source of the BFG 10,000 is just a BFG? Oh. Under clicking heads, I think it was... Yeah. Gotta do those sick, sick missions. A much bigger BFG. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't quite remember this this part of the level. 
Lord for the 10,000 describes it as a series of lenses. Ah, okay. I'm excited to get that lore. It's, it's several all taped together. <laughs> Fucking doom, man. Uh, every time I think they've out absurded themselves. They shoot the BFG through an amplifier? Yeah. Let's see here. Minern kill? Hey. How are you? Why does that look so... S I don't know. I felt like I, sh I should have uh, known what that was. Give me that lore! Give me that lore pop-up. Give it. Stop telling me about the automat. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. It's a big-ass gun. It's not a bag, it's a BFG. I thought we had already passed that, my bad. No worries, Stealth. Uh, I am not soup. Oh boy, Maxwell, does anyone have a quick summary of the story? Unfortunately, I did kind of did kind of bottom line it earlier. Uh, let's see. <sighs> Private company finds crack on Mars that leads to another dimension. Turns out this other dimension is leaping or is leaking extremely potent energy that then becomes the dominant energy source on Earth. Uh, but also turns out that this other dimension is hell, or rather, it was another civilization until hell conquered it. Um. Doomslayer was from this civilization, but also it did, did some other things before that. Uh, so now there's like some weird political game going on where multiple alien races have a long history together, and the grand, like the grand architect of all of them, is basically using human life as an energy source, and Earth is in the middle of getting harvested, basically. Um, that all connects in ways that it, that get more into it. But. But we got some BFG 10,000 lore right here. Are you going to try to do Eternal on Ultra Nightmare? Yeah, Rob. That's the goal. I'm going to get there eventually. That's hell, but that other world was absorbed into hell. Yep. Just like Earth is kind of happening to right now. Uh, does anyone have a pair of pants that just don't doesn't feel good with your man parts? Just uncomfortable in any sitting position? Yeah, I've had a few of those. Usually it's like my thighs are too big for the cut of the pants, so it just pulls really tight across my balls whenever I sit down. <sighs> Originally established as a mining and communication relay, the UAC outpost on Phobos began immediate expansion following the destruction of the Argent facility on Mars. The UAC board of directors, intent on retaining their monopoly of the Red Planet and its surrounding airspace, issued the construction of an expansive defense platform. Expansive. Using technology derived from the BFG-9000, the design plan called for a massive particle cannon to be built on the orbiting moon. The BFG-10,000, the largest man-made weapon platform ever conceived, wields enough firepower to defend against even the most sophisticated of capital-grade FTL cruisers in existence, or against the eventual potentiality of space-bound demonic threat. It's not working out, though, is it? The first phase was a doozy. Yeah. There's a lot of individual phrases in this game that are, that are, are real fucking intense. I think I just walked backwards into the fire. Jeez, that was dumb. Humanity has faster than light travel? They don't. So that that's a weird that's a weird thing to say. Because no, that's not a thing. Uh Gaming Fishman. Thanks for the Thanks for the resub. Doom has Doom has pretty damn good lore. I don't know that I'd, I'd call it best, but you know what? Never mind. Yeah, let's let's go with it. Why fight it? Best lore. Uh, no, I'm not drinking tonight, Geralt. Uh, just water. I it's been it's been tough though, dude. I'll just be sitting inside, being like, why am I not drinking? And it's it's really hard on a daily basis to to find a reason why I'm not. If I'm being if I'm being honest, uh, because man, drinking is great. And if all I'm doing is sitting around, it's mostly dietary though. I gotta I gotta lose weight. Got to get in Fast and Furious shape. So when I when my my action movie de debut hits, I look as good as I possibly can. Fuck! Oh, a guy spawns behind me. Yeah. Switch to weed. Oh no! I mean, I'm Cal dude. I'm in I'm in LA. Yeah, I got that too. Don't worry. And you're right. That is that is nicer on the body. It's, uh, there's no hangover. It's... 
can't stream on weed though. Well, I guess you can. It's just I don't uh, I don't want to do that. I feel like I don't want to be slow if I'm streaming. Like I don't want to be slow reacting to people. I don't want to be slow acknowledging people's chats. I don't want to be slow playing the game. Uh Whenever I'm not streaming, I'll uh, I'll hit a I'll hit a vape two or two there, but yeah, weed is essential in LA. I mean, it literally is Magic Kool Aid. I don't know if I don't know if that's what you were you were intending, but yeah, weed shops are still open, so they are essential businesses. Snoop Dogg talks up right on camera. Oh, I'm not I'm not afraid about like legal shit or or making anyone making anyone uncomfortable. I'm just more like I want to be I want to be in a good at, like. I want to be on point for you guys. Whether it's just talking or whether it's playing a game, I... I don't... I don't want to, like... I don't want streaming to get to the point where I just kind of do whatever I feel like, you know? I still consider this being on the clock to a degree. I... it's... it's a, it's something that I really, really enjoy, but... Um... I don't want to take it so lightly that I just... I just think that this is free, you know? Don't stream and smoke if you are not chronic. Pretty well said, yeah, I guess so. Dispensary, I walked my weed out to my car. Oh, okay, you bought it and they walked it out to you? That's awesome. Yeah, I I, I, I pieced it together. Um, there, are, there are like restaurants that do that now. I'm still doing okay on uh... I'd like to see him try. Oh my god. This is such like a 90s FPS cutscene of goons talking about talking shit about you. Not an ice pick is your melee weapon. It is a magic wand. I'm about to get out of the military and try weed for the first time. What should I expect? Uh, I don't know. That you necessarily need. Oh yeah, look. Yeah, there's the lenses. I guess. I don't know you necessarily need to have your expectations set. Just go easy. Uh, step into it gradually. Find your find your tolerance. Ice cold killer, thank you for the raid. Clack, 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 clack. Would you like me to disable the safety protocols? Hi, right, welcome raiders. Sorry, I just gotta put a just gotta blast a chunk out of Mars right now. We should move ahead. And this is the gun he takes. Danger. All personnel evacuate to Mars service. Ever try blazing before a workout? Uh it Yes. Um That that makes me like That makes me quite a bit less effective in my workout. I cannot hit my lifts, uh, if I'm high. And like, for some of the- some of the more complicated lifts, I really wouldn't trust myself. Oh yeah, they want me to- hold on. Like, I wouldn't want to do like a squat or a deadlift high, because I'd be afraid that I wouldn't, like, i just fall over, or like, I don't know, my, some of my bigger lifts and my more complicated lifts basically squat and deadlift. I could probably do a lot of cable work or arm stuff. If I were high, but it, I wouldn't trust a deadlift. Like, a deadlift, I need to have so many muscle groups, like, working all at the same time. Do a clean and jerk? Ugh. No. So, like, yeah. Uh, I could see it working, but it'd have to be, like, isolated stuff. It couldn't be, like, full body. Because <laughs> I've tried, and it didn't go well. Like, a bench, even, uh, was bad. Like, I just couldn't, I couldn't put out the, couldn't put out the power. Um... So, if, if you're just doing, like, a, a toning workout, or... Ugh, this is so awesome. I just... Also, wait. There was a portal? You can use the facility escape pods to get down to the Mars core, but we have no way of reaching it from here. So, wait. How did I... Where did I teleport from, and where did I teleport to? Did I shoot through, like, a space station, and that's what I'm on right now? Or is this... Are these the ruins of another facility that already got demoned? Riding a bike would be tight. Now that I've done. Yeah, you can do you can do low low impact cardio. High or drunk as hell. Aiden teleported you? Hmm. Oh, Mars chunks. Oh! This is the portion of the Mars facility that blew out into space. My favorite day is chest day. I mean, yeah, dude. 
Uh, same. This is just Nightmare, not Ultra Nightmare. Not yet, Robin Roll. I want to beat it on Nightmare first. And then do a little more experimenting, a little more lab work. Before I, uh, before I start attempting Ultra Nightmare. I goofed the landing. Huh? Did I miss something? I meant like cardio? Yeah. I've, I've definitely done exercise bike and like treadmill and stuff while drunk and while high and stuff like that. And that's great too because it deadens you. So you can, you can go forever. Uh, if you're listening to like good music. I've, I've run for like a straight hour on a treadmill because I've been drunk and just been like, like listening to like fucking pop punk or whatever, just losing it. My like high school top 40 or whatever. <laughs> Mostly that's like, sometimes I'll be, I'll feel guilty about the calories I took in and then I'll, I'll have to go and like try and burn off some of the calories. I think Dupes does P90X. Ugh. No, he doesn't need to. The rest of us need to. Jesus. I think the 10k blew it up. Okay. The Slayer destroyed the surface platform he would have teleported to. I think that's true, yeah. Took a military PT test, absolutely wasted once, passed it, but it was a terrible idea. Yeah. Ah, uh, as fun as it can sound, it's really not good. Uh. Trying to decide if I need to get over here now or if I do that later. It seems like I can do it later, so. Killing demons is cardio, yeah. Doom Slayer gets all of his workouts in. Just living his life. I'm trying to find this fucking totem. Oh, there you are. God damn it. Troll. Trolling ass enemy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fuck. I thought he was just freaking out. I didn't think that was an attack. all over the place. Alright, I take back all the bad things I said about lock-on. That's actually really good. If you can get a full salvo off, that's actually a lot of damage. Yeah, the carcass is a little shit. Yeah. I like it. Like, the carcass is an example of something of, like, Shades of the Marauder, where when a carcass is in a fight, it does change a lot of things. But it doesn't, man, it doesn't upend everything. You can still get around it. It's like a consideration, not an imperative. But, uh, I don't know. I'm, st I'm still figuring out the Marauders. I still feel like there's a lot of learning to be done. I guess I can't... Don't forget level challenges? Ah, indeed. I, yeah, there's, uh, it's just, it's, oh, right, BFG, it's Slayer Key. Um, yeah, I gotta remember the BFG. I've got two shots. And that's the other weird thing. Why are BFG cells in increments of 30 if nothing else uses them? Why, why wouldn't, like, why make it more than 1, 2, 3? Because that's how, I mean, that's how 2016 did it, and there's no, there's no reason for there to be other... The Unmaker? Oh, use it. Okay, well that makes more sense then. I have not messed with the Unmaker at all. My bad. Look at me. Look at me jump into conclusions. Look at me hopping all over like I know what I'm talking about. Taking little bunny hops. Come 
can play Mega Man Battle Network. No, uh, Salam, Salami Jack. I did see Caden tweeting about that game, though, and that sounds cool. Hope plays. All is very well, man. Playing Doom, hanging out with some chill people. Ain't, ain't no problems. Aside from the the general destruction of society. God damn it. Fuck. God, pinkies can be so fast or so fucking slow. There. I was sloppy, but got there. You claim to hate demons, yet you use their life source. Hmm, curious. Yeah. It does, they do... I, in 2016, there was a pretty telling line that, like, the Doomslayer also absorbs the power of the people he kills, which... You could, you could, if you really wanted to get generous, explain why he's able to dash an Eternal and not in 2016. Because after killing the Spider Mastermind, he kind of sucked up all that that power. Curious. <laughs> Turning point UAC, yeah. Yet you participate in demon energy. Hmm, curious. Access to surface gun bridge granted. Manual loading initiated. That is a weapon, not a teleporter. Yeah, I don't I was I was bummed that like Hayden's first thing is that he starts being like, Doom Slayer, you can't go putting yourself in that gun. Like, and that, to a degree, that's what he did in 2016. But you'd think by now he'd know better. Like, why are you second guessing him? Why are you nagging him like this? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit for his character. It fits for the game. Like, there's Jessica and HR again. I get why, uh, ha, rude. I, I get why they have him do it as a writing conceit. Uh, because it points out the absurdity of what you're doing, and sometimes people just don't recognize how silly something is unless you say it out loud. The ion uh, is designed he's bored. Huh? Did you notice on your first playthrough, Sam Hayden and the Seraphim share the same voice actor? I did not, actually. So the, the Seraphim is the guy who gives Doomslayer his powers? Uh, we'll see it in a second. Two, one. Generalia God. Thank you for the prime sub. <laughs> Alright, lands on his fucking feet. Stupid. Uh, that's great. Roll out the shoulders a little bit. So he second guesses the he second guesses the one guy he kind of depended on as last resort. Bold move, Cotton. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, technically, it, it is because of Hayden that the Slayer is active and doing things at all. So there's there's something to that. Uh, he does he does get to claim a little bit of ownership over the Slayer being alive. Also, this is kind of neat. The whole level's tilted. There aren't many games that do this anymore. Even if you're playing in like a like a destroyed area to have the whole thing be tilted like that. God, the soundtrack will not stop. I love it. What runes do you recommend? I like the slow mo in the air. Yeah, I I definitely like that one a lot too. For the uh, for the ability to pick off demon parts at the beginning. Also, like when you when you pair it with a meat hook, it's a it's a great tool to sort of take inventory of where you're at. I use, I use Meat Hook slow-mo as a way to sort of see where my cooldowns are and what grenades I have and, like, where my ammo's... Well, that's that's one thing I wish that this game had, is, like, some kind of readout to tell you where your ammo's levels were at for all your guns. Um, even if it were just, like, bars on the bottom of the screen, I think that would be re very useful. I think the, the weapon wheel kind of does that, but it'd be nice to just see it at a glance and also not have to use the weapon wheel for that utility. Is Vega God? Um, yeah, there's... I guess there's some vocal lines that imply that. I do think that, like... 
even even if that is sort of the case or ends up being the case, I think it requires some shifting of what we think a god is. Um, because as this eternal certainly has has pushed doom as a thing closer to this Christian vision of heaven and hell. But uh, thought Pierce pulled the sarcophagus out of hell. No, it, it was Hayden. Pierce was involved with finding it, but Hayden was the one that extracted it and hid it. Um, then hit and hit it on uh, the UAC facility because he knew straight up that Pierce was losing her mind and that she wasn't reliable. Ooh. I wish the grenade chainsaw and flame belch icons were bigger so you could clearly see where they're at in your peripheral vision. Yeah, it does, like, it is, it is a bummer to move all the way to the bottom right and have to look at the icons. Uh, it'd be nice if they put something around the, uh, the center, um, reticle. It doesn't have to be much. Maybe just, like, a little, a little colored pip that's either filled in or not, but that would be nice, too. What's the meter at the top right? Ah, that is just uh, that's you killing demons in the level. You get you get weapon upgrade points as you as you murder more effectively. Oh wait, I don't. That's right. You come back that way. I spent so long trying to figure out how to get up there before, like trying all kinds of crazy wacky jumps and stuff. Yeah, purple Slayer gates. Uh, well, purple is the Slayer gate. The pink ones are like optional puzzle type challenges. And then the red is just the level proper. As you go through and kill demons, you'll unlock more upgrade tokens, which is that 3 out of 10 thing. Shitload of demons. Or shitload of imps. Oh, no, no, it's not. Fuck. God damn it. Shit, man. Well, that was dumb. No reason for me to die to that, but... There we go. Went and did it. Tummy. Little tummy boy. Alright. What am I doing on? Yeah, getting through. Picking things. Picking things up. Purple Gate's gonna be a toughie. Yeah, we'll see. Um It's been it's been nice to uh damn it, why did I do that? To get all now that I have more of the weapons. I've got nearly all of them now. No, I do have all of them, yeah. Except for the uh crucible. But, uh, yeah, it's just, man, it's tough when you don't have your entire arsenal to do some of those. There we go. Wish we got to see the wretch in this game? Like, Nito armor forgery scene? Uh, yeah. So, wait. Oh, I, I guess the hooded figure is the Seraphim. I thought that was also the wretch. But it's hard to say. Because you don't really know exactly who they're talking about when they say that um, in the other game. It was kind of neat to see, like, literally the, um... The, the exact robed figure from the scrolls and stuff in the game. I didn't think it was going to be that literal, but there it was. Pretty cool payoff, though. Isn't the wretch the maker who betrayed the other makers? Yeah. And gave, gave the Doomslayer his... I think in... Okay, so... In... In the canon of 2016, as I recall, there was a, a Seraphim and, a, and the Wretch Who Shall Not Be Named. One was cited as giving the Doomslayer his Praetor suit. The other was cited as giving him his terrible speed and strength. Um, Wretch just made the armor? Okay. So yeah, then the Seraphim, I guess, is the hooded figure 
that you see in the next level, um, I think. I'm always convinced that I'm missing a million power-ups here. The armor is important because it gave more power. The armor seems to be the thing that allows him to absorb Argent energy. Um, which he does in 2016 to like power up. In this game he gets weird crystals. Um, there's also a pretty heavy implication that the armor allows him to absorb the spirit energy of all the demons he murders. So as he's going around and killing he's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Kind of like the opposite of spawn. Instead of using spectral magic he's actually absorbing it. Yeah, I'm in the Doomacorn Duma giggle. Damn it. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. I don't know if there's getting back from that. There. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Shit, man. Whew. Often, thanks for the cheer. Uh, the way I read it, the Seraphim's powers would let him absorb energy. The armor just happens to do it too. Uh, that's a possible interpretation. Um, there, there was something about 2016 about referencing the Argent Accumulator in his suit. Because I think, oh wait, that's right. You you pull one out of the Cyber Demon. You have to pull an Argent Accumulator out, and that's what blows up and creates a portal. So, and Argent Accumulators are the things that like process Argent energy. So, it is. I, I agree, like, I think there's, it's vague enough that you can interpret it multiple ways, but that's kind of my, it's kind of my headcanon, I guess. I hope the wretch didn't get retconned. There wasn't a whole lot to retcon, really. And, no. I mean, it was just one line. That's the thing about most Doom lore, is that so much of it is vague that there's not a whole lot to actually get right or wrong. And I think it's kind of done that way by design. You're it. You're not a, you're not an imp. <sighs> Marauders seem to have the Argent Accumulator suit. Yeah. So it seems like that's something that is common in Sentinel Knight Sentinel armor. Which makes sense because the Argenta were using Argent Energy too. They just called it Essence. And it was also furnished to them by the maker because they were basically being groomed to be harvested kind of like the humans are now. So. Doom Lord is very flimsy. Doubly so for the original two? Yeah. Axelrod. I mean, the original two is... There's basically nothing there. It's just like whatever, whatever the devs made up while they were making the game. I'm missing anything? No. Seems like... Getting most of it so far. Could the wretch and the seraph and be the same guy? And just mentioned in different ways. Just Krem, yeah. I I think that's likely. It didn't seem like it in 2016, but it may be at this point. Because Eternal doesn't really touch on him getting the Praetor suit. Um, unless it does, and I just didn't didn't pick it up. there. 
It's been pretty clear Doom Guy gets so mad that goes back to kill the demons because they killed his rabbit in Doom 2 Hell on Earth. I mean, yeah, that, that's literally spelled out at the end of Doom 2, yeah. I don't think the suit was mentioned. No, and he's got a different suit too. Where did he get that? Maybe it was on board the, the Doom Fortress. That would stand to reason, given that his old suit is there and also busted up, so... Maybe in between Doom, Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal, Doom Slayer's armor got broken and he found the Doom Fortress to find another Praetor suit? These are things that maybe the DLC could spell out? I think we're getting a third Doom game where they resolve the questions in the DLCs. I don't think they're ever going to resolve the questions. Like, the, the point is to have questions. That's what makes lore fun. So I don't think they're ever going to answer everything. The way, that, the way that you keep this sort of thing going is you answer some questions and add new ones, and you just keep that process going forever. And you have to make it so that the experience doesn't hinge on the questions getting answered. Because then you have a lost situation where the answers are never going to be as fun as the question. You just have to keep the questions alive. So, in that regard, I really appreciated what they did in 2016 of, like, leaving a lot of open questions. Um, and Eternal seems like it's shades of that, too, where they're giving you a bigger look at everything, but they're not explicitly answering every last question you might have. with me? Alright. Oh, there's BFG ammo up there. The demons seem to consider the wretch as betraying them of sorts, though, which is weird, so I thought he was from hell. Yeah, they refer to the wretch who shall not be named, so if you... But it, it kind of adds up, though. Oh, I can't pay... Wait, 60 is the max? Oh, shoot, I should have used it. Um, so there was a civil war... Uh, where um, the Night Sentinel got divided in two, really. Once, once I guess, the, the shoe dropped and, like, the Makers sort of made it clear that they were using the demons to populate or to harvest worlds, I guess. There was a split between the people who were loyal to the Maker, who had given them all this tech and sort of guided their, their, their civilization. And the people are like, what the fuck is this? I didn't sign up for this. Uh... So, in that regard, it's it's also implied, or maybe even said explicitly, that the Doomslayer clearly was uh, on the revolting side, did not want to join up with the Maker. So, at that, by that logic, whoever provided him with the suit was a betrayer and a wretch. Uh, but not not a betrayer in the sense that the betrayer was a betrayer. Uh, it gets, shouldn't have used that word. It's only going to complicate things. Why say Retu shall not be named and call him the Seraphim, though? Seems like naming him a bit. I think the Seraphim was from a different point of view. Um, but that's a, that's a good point. Um, that certainly implies that they are two different people and that one is reviled a little more than another one. I don't know. That the demons hate the person who gave the Doomslayer his Doom suit a lot more. Oh, there's a battery up there. Just a one up. Oh, oh, you're right. I did. That's okay. Haven't fully missed it yet. But yeah. Fucking love this game. Finished part one of the lore run on YouTube. Oh man. Yeah. There's, there's already, there's already a lot of payoff in this game, which is kind of nice. Seems to be a lot of busted up Sentinel tech in the Fortress of Doom. Stands to reason that the current Praetor suit is a combination of the old suit with random stuff cobbled together. Yeah, I think that's 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 heavily implied by his, like, the Doomslayer's, like, mechanical room. It's just weird to think about the Doomslayer doing anything that isn't killing demons, because... What the fuck? Not like an invisible wall or something. Really didn't want me to do that. Hello, swole Sif. I'm doing pretty great. I had a good day today. It's not really over yet, but still. I think I feel qualified to say that. Had a nice workout this morning. Been eating pretty well. Yeah, pick apart. It's 
You just have to kind of understand where they want you to go. Or not try to go too far out of bounds. That is really cool looking though. Jesus. Doom guy's still human? He loves shooters, music, comic books, and bunnies. Yeah? Yeah, all, this, all that's true. That one is done. I can be back to real stream watching. Oh, do you have to kick the do you have to kick the quality down when you're downloading something? I am so blessed to have big ass LA internet. It's something I try not to take for granted, but it's it's hard not to when it's there all the time. Not dead. Damn it. I really need you to be dead. Got backed into a corner. Is there a snake? Oh, one of you. What's your download speed? I have gigabit. So feel feel free to hate me. I'll accept it. It's it's really not fair. Yeah. Thick city internet, yeah. Thick pipes. Okay, Slayer Gate. Do we like personalization stuff for the hub ship? Not really, no. You unlock personalization stuff on the hub ship. You unlock skins and things like that for the Doom Slayer. And those are visible in the game, so that's kind of nice. Huh. I don't know that I did this key. I think by this point in the game, I was like, no, I gotta finish this. Let's move. Um, hmm. Oh, that's a different... No, this is... This is not Ultra Nightmare. I can, I can die, and the game will not start over. It, it's not Ultra Nightmare yet. I will be attempting that later. Um, but... For now, I'm just I'm still learning the game. Hmm. Is it a speed test? An, uh, 82 down, 7.8 up. Ooh, sneaky yard bark. Thanks for the thank you for the cheer. Parents Electric Co-op started their own internet company in Central Montana. They have symmetric they have symmetrical gig in the county. Nice. There's, seems like, yeah, okay, it's in there, which means I have to get in that room, which is not in the map, but that seems like I have to come from there, maybe? In the next room? Hey! Alright. Really? Alex can't stream unless it's super early in the morning? Damn. He's like, he's in LA too. Man, maybe it's just the, uh, maybe it's just whatever I, uh, I, or Spectrum is just that trash, maybe. Damn it. Damn you, great. Huh. Wait. I can't get in from this way. Oh, the control panel just passed. There's a yellow button. Control panel. This one? No. This one. There it is. Thank you. Getting colder, yeah. Nope, okay. Didn't feel like mantling today. Oh, that's not how I'm supposed to do it.
cool. Huh. <sighs> All right. Oh, internet would cut out a few times a month during a stream. That fucking sucks. Ah, uh, man. Uh, Cause he he does bonkers numbers on Twitch. Um, that's horrible. Man, I would I would move to a new complex or something. All right. Oh fuck me! All right, we're just we're just going out here, huh? Just straight up going out. Guess what? There's a fucking marauder here. Shit. Shit. I don't like this. I don't like it. I got a fire dog. Damn it. What the fuck was hitting me? Oh. I wonder who. Fuck. God damn it. I'm just like he hard. Ah, fuck. Like you can't you can't sit still. Yeah, so I got to deal with him being around all the time during this fight. But I can't deal with him. So I kill everything else. Ah, shit. And I know that the drones are supposed to like help with that. And they do to an extent. So it's an interesting Interesting dynamic. What the fuck? Ow! Oh, the fucking prowlers. Yep. There you are. There. Ah! Shit, man. <sighs> Fuck! He's not dead. Must have used and lost the hook. I had a moment of indecision there. I'm like, what do I do to this guy? Where'd the marauder go? Shit. Ah. Uh. I'm in a corner. There is a portal. Okay. Man, thank God they can't go through portals. No! Urgh. God damn! Ah. Uh. <sighs> Next about Marauder, he's a priority target, but you can't deal with him before killing everything else. Yeah, I'm slowly. Jesus. Slowly wrapping my head around it. Oh wait, I forgot to have the. I forgot to have the BFG. <laughs> I don't think the Marauder ki I don't think the BFG kills the Marauder. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I think they specifically say you can't use super weapons on the Marauder. What the fuck? Ah. Can, but it has to be a direct hit. Oh, like while he's stunned? He 
you're really lucky and hit him with spawns, you can insta-kill him? I think I might have. So I don't see him. Explosive barrels. They're not as lethal in this game as they used to be. Yeah, that rocket launcher burst is, is a good amount of damage. I think I got him. I got really, really lucky. Use the shield or the chain gun on the mobile turret. I've been using the shield, actually, which I didn't use it at all because I keep forgetting the shield's there, but it's really hard to land a direct hit on him because he blocks with the shield. Yeah. Oh yeah, lore for the, the Maker Drones, that's right. Um, yeah, there you are. Fucking things. Erdak's population is mainly comprised of drones, beings that exist as extensions of the Con Maker's will. <laughs> Though each is endowed with their own unique identity, they remain biologically unable to resist a command from their Con, and so function in a perfectly synchronized colony system. Drones never leave Erdak, their bodies not yet mature enough to avoid harm while crossing dimensions. Huh. Weird. The this, this small descriptions of Erdak sound pretty wild. I guess I need to start upgrading Microwave Beam because that's one of the fucking... It's one of the weekly challenges for some reason. Then why was there a Maker Drone there? You're killing little angel kids? Yeah, I mean, except angels are not good. Angels are kind of down with the human race getting uh, getting consumed by demons so that they they can be uh, keep on being angels. Killing younglings. If Anna can do, can do it, I can do it. How do I get that sweet, sweet question mark? I'm gonna get you question mark. Oh, this is probably how. Maybe not. What? Oh no. Oh. Oh yes. Oh good god. Stomach was gonna turn. Can we switch to Supernatural yet? Huh? Oh, the, sh the show? Yeah, no Solo Samurai yet. This, ga this game is mentally draining. It is- it can fry you. It just moves so fast and you- it asks so much of you. Need a cigarette? Yeah. Need a, a nice- a relaxing vape hit. Mellow me out. The Doom Slayer. His power. His will to overcome. These are the lives of the non-believers. I don't think there's anything down here. Seems 2016 was a lot more free spirited. This one's a lot more strict. In terms of what? If you stun the Marauder with a super shotgun, you can quickly kill him with a BFG shot. I've been doing that whenever I can because I suck at fighting them. Jerking the Gurk. That's that is a vital tech. Uh, anything that can that can remove the volatility of fighting a Marauder is going to be really important for beating Ultra Nightmare. Because I feel like, I feel like to some degree, Ultra Nightmare will come down to getting past the Marauders. Just being able to do that reliably. The lost city of the bell. This was before your time in the Sentinels. The Slipgate will take you to some... Slipgate? That's, that's some straight up Quake shit. So to some degree, I wonder if... Also, I think that sparkle is like a glitch from uh, the cutscene. That's supposed to be on my magic wand. Yeah, people have beat it, or at least one person's beat it on Ultra Nightmare. Because they were they were screaming about it on Twitter and then people tagged me in it, which was which was awesome. I'm glad that people people kind of got my back like that. Let me know when that shit goes down. Ooh, that's City of Beth. So one thing I do have to eat a little bit of crow about is that I insisted when playing through 2016 that there was no um, Argent shit on Mars naturally. But apparently there was. And on Earth, too. So, Harris and I am not playing Ultra Nightmare. Um, oh, in 2016, you can play the entire game using only a Super Shotgun and Gauss. 
Only chainsaw to kill, insta kill big demons with ammo as a bonus. Yeah, Arond. I mean, yeah. I guess this one's more strict about making you use all of the the tools available. But I'm I kind of like that. I like games that have mechanics that matter. Although it's it's tough because it is easy to put in mechanics and then force them to matter. I feel like to some degree MOBAs are a lot like that. There's a million mechanics and they put in little things to make all of them matter, but I feel like it's not quite as locked together. It doesn't really push a lot of interesting decision making, at least for me. How much do you think PKs were buffed from when Doom 2016 came out? Because I'm th doing Doom 64 and I forgot how kind of useless they are in the older games. Yeah, they're not... The older games not being strictly 3D made pink, pinkies a lot different to fight, but yeah. <sighs> Amidst the long and enduring history of Sentinel civilization, there are moments in antiquity that have become buried in time. Forgotten chapters that remain concealed to Sentinel historians, waiting to be unearthed. The fallen city of Habeth is one such tale, all but forgotten to the tomes of Legacy's past. Once a prosperous port city, a proud, gleaming marker of conquest for the distant tribe of Bethian clansmen of the Outer Worlds, Habeth bridged the disparate sentinel cities with in the indigenous design of Slipgate Invention. But it was not meant to last, and among those cities lost in the Crusades of Sentinel past was Habeth, now little more than a smoldering ruin swallowed by the quaking surface of a once habitable Mars. God... Hey, Garrett. How you doing? Oops. Gotta do a better leap if I wanna... Yeah. I thought I'd try. Any prediction or what future DLC might be about? Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, it could be anything. I, I would like for them to try to... fill in some of the time gap between 2016 and Eternal. Or even between, I guess, Doom 64 and 2016. If they forgot all about the city, how did Hayden know of it? That's a really good question. It's, um... Doom Eternal certainly lets on that Hayden knows a lot, lot more about, uh... Maker tech and the Sentinels and all that shit than he was letting on in 2016. Oh, wait. I don't... I already got that challenge. We gotta move. Ah, uh, no. Fuck. God, you can even you can even freeze those big ass guys, but you can't freeze a marauder. Man, ridiculous. Oh, forgot. Chain gun any good? It's a lot better, yeah. Doom 2016, you use chainsaw because you wanted to, and this one, then you use chainsaw because you have to. Also, Eternal is very good. It's not what I meant when I said it's more strict. You need to play a lot more in line with what they designed rather than just going crazy and doing what you want. Still very fun and very good. It's very different and not what I was expecting after 2016. Yeah, Ron, uh, that makes sense. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to sound too too uh too hurt by by what you said i uh there does seem to be a bit of a discussion around like the changes they made to 2016 which i think are i think are valid there does seem to be i think it's almost uh in a weird way it does it does come down to a difference in philosophy and and game design and game playing on one end you have games that just kind of try to empower you to do whatever you want like a just cause sort of game or, or I would, I would say to a to a lesser degree, like something like Skyrim, that is just there to be like, you're gonna kill some shit, you're gonna get some loot, and whatever you, whatever sword you want to use, it's up to you, baby. Um, we're not gonna make the fights that hard because we just want you to to do whatever you want and have fun. And then on the other end, you kind of have something like twenty six or Doom Eternal, which is we have a a very specific set of of mechanics that we've tuned to work together in a certain way to create a certain kind of experience, and we're going to use ah shit shit. Ah, I saw that. I got too too caught up in that narrow hallway with a bunch of minions, and also that I saw that Doom Hunter down there. Um, I don't like the thing that I wish um, gaming culture could get away from, and I know it, I know it's unlikely to happen because this this these are discussions that happen in every medium, every artistic medium of every kind. 
But getting away from, like, this game is good or bad, and more, is this game what I want? Um, there's this weird notion of, like, perfect game design. Uh, or that, like, every game is a 10 out of 10 if only the DLC wasn't there or if EA didn't ruin it. Or, like, that there's a perfect version of every game floating out there that the developers get in the way of and change. But it's all created. It's all created by people making decisions. And those decisions have, have motivations behind them. The Crucible helped him learn. That's, yeah, I think, I think he was, he was the only one, aside from Olivia Pierce, really, that had full access to all of the information, um, being, being pulled out of Mars. And he's the only one that had access to the information and had the brain capacity for it and the tech to understand everything that they found in the Sentinel Ruins, or sorry, in the Argent Ruins on Mars. Um, so yeah, I think it's certainly justifiable that he knows... He knows more. Uh, I just... Damn it! Like, fuck! These fucking... Uh, on my ass already! The, uh... Man, the demons, to some extent, get so thick you can't even move sometimes. <laughs> just... What the fuck? Something's already hitting me! Okay. I thought that was ice! No! Fuck. Fuck. Okay. Ah! Ah, I just needed, yeah, I just needed a little bit of life. A little bit more would be good. Please, stagger! Okay. <sighs> Fuck. Garbage shots. No! This is not good. The minion want to run over here? Let me juice up a little bit. That'll work. Where'd he go? Ah. Yeah, the Hell Knights are... The Hell Knights are crazy, man. The, it just in general, all of the AI is tons, tons, tons more aggressive. And that makes the Hell Knights pretty bad. Oh, shit. Ah, not an imp. Okay. Oh. Where's this guy? There you are. Fuck! Where? There you go. I don't like this. There. Oh yeah. Uh we've been we've been talking in some pretty heavy spoilers so far, so I'm not going to I'm not going to get too offended if you if you dabble in them, but I would say just be mindful. Try not to go too intense on them. Contextual spoilers probably okay. Some of my entire essay I wrote today, how everyone has their own expectations and values when it comes to media and entertainment, but instead of reviewers saying critics said this is bad, uh, cause I don't like the way the voice actors sound, being like, hey, if you like X and Y, this you might not love or hate this 9 out of 10 times things are not black and white or good and bad. That's true. Um, which to me, at least, drives home the difference between hobbyist commentators and actual critics. Um, and I have have shot my mouth off on this in ways that I probably shouldn't have. Shit, Omar! I saw that in there. 
Uh, sorry, I was busy murdering. God, that was 18 minutes ago. I missed I missed that for a long time. Damn. Uh, Pan Cybertrucks, hey. Forgot you were going to stream this. Why would I not? Why would I ever not? Damn. I'm actually... I'm, I'm bummed that I missed Omar. Uh, I think... Uh, oh, hold on. What's going on? There are demons. Uh, critics are able to see the nuance. I think... Yeah, Iliando. Critics are able to appraise the objective level of craft in something, and then on a deeper level are able to communicate to someone else whether or not they will appreciate the craft on display. So I think there's two levels of it. Is it well made? Um, did did the creator realize their intent through the... What the hell's happening? Um, through, through their use of tools uh, and creative expression? Uh, and subjectively, can they explain to the audience whether or not that's something that they would find enjoyable? Uh, so it's like, you can say if something's good or bad, or right or wrong, I think. Um, because there are there is an objective level of, of craft involved in, in the arts. Like, a painting can be objectively bad. Yes, there might be somebody on the planet who likes it, but they like a bad painting. That's fine. Um, a painting can also be good and not to somebody's taste. And a critic should be able to tell the difference. Um, and be able to be able to explain or, or uh, convey that information to someone else of what the difference is. Um, that's that's my personal theory. And that's, that's the philosophy that I try to inject into whenever I do game reviews or anything like that. Is to both objectively appraise the game. How well is it made? Do the systems work together? Is it is it well crafted in terms of its like art assets and its music? And then beyond that, is it something you will like? The Hell Priest Dag Grav. Paintings like all art are pretty much only subjective. Ah, uh, I think when it comes to something. Like when, like, like, say a movie. You know, a movie can be so poorly lit you can't even watch it. That's that's objective craft. If you can't see it, it's bad art. Or is that the point? I don't know. Maybe somebody likes a movie they can't see. Um, but like, there are there are things there are, there are functional things about a movie. Maybe painting was a bad idea. People can like a banana tape to a wall. Okay, may, maybe <laughs> maybe maybe painting and fine art was a bad point of comparison. Um, but like. Let's say you make an album, and it's just mastered so poorly you can't hear the music. You didn't get the last combat token? I don't think the level's over yet. Um, you're right, though. The, like, the, last, the last thing didn't finish. It's still red. Did I miss an enemy? Hold on, let me go back. Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 3. Oof. I was thinking more of the, like, some of the trauma trash that they, <laughs> they made us watch for theater mode. Just because the license was cheap. Um... Had this bug, had to replay the mission. Aw, oh, man. Really? Food is a better comparison. Hmm. Okay. Chip aside, thank you. Thank you for, for saving my, my extended and overwrought analogy. <laughs> yes, food can be prepared poorly. It can be burnt. It can be undercooked. It's possible that there's someone on the planet that can like it. That just means they like badly prepared food. And there's, like, there's not a whole lot of subjectivity about it. Apart from there is somebody out there with weird enough taste that they like it. That doesn't prove that it's subjective. It just means that somebody has weird tastes. Um, now, once you go beyond that to like, okay, do you appreciate these flavors? Do you like this mixing? Do you like this preparation? Then it's down to a food critic to explain to you or me, someone who has, who has no developed palate, whether or not it's a meal I would like. And uh, it's a glitch. Fuck, man. This game has largely been pretty glitch free, aside from the random freezing at the, the loading screens. Yeah, Weldon Steak. So, like, it's borderline objective that Weldon Steak is a ruined piece of meat. Um, but... I... That hurts. That hurts a lot. Try to die? Ah, oh, I could have reloaded checkpoint. Well, what? Maybe. Blech. Well, that's not lore, so that's something, but I guess I'll just, I will have to replay the level. I've had that happen when I fast traveled to the arena, it gave me the token. Damn it! All things I could have done a second ago. Go to the main menu, 
Level select, then return to campaign. Oh, does it... Okay. Oh! Ooh. I don't care about... Okay, so... Main menu... Oh, I got a skin. Uh, fast traveled. Go to main menu, level select, then return to the campaign. You mean, whoop, I clicked the wrong thing. You just have to re replay. Oh, did I mess it up? Probably. I mean, fast travel is still unlocked after you've beaten the level, right? You need to replay the whole level. Or is it? No, it's not. Okay. Uh, oh, you can do it with cheats now? That's a good point. I have not tried the multiplayer at all, no. Um, crap. Hey, Becca. How you doing? Ooh. Oh, Geeky Skeleton. Thanks for the 666 bits. Very nice. I destroyed Angry Joe in the multiplayer. Ah, uh, that had to feel good, huh? Welcome home, Great Slayer. Alert the priest. Yeah, Eliando. Two people are demons and one person is the Slayer. And the Slayer is overpowered, so the two, the two demons have to, like, work together and try and, like, just whittle the Slayer down. They basically have to be demons from, from the campaign. Goddamn. How far are you in the game? I don't know how to... A lot of people have asked that. I'm not quite sure how to, how to really spell that out, if I'm being honest. I wish, I wish I had a way to bottom line it for you, but... Like, level eight, nine? Uh... Illumin... Illuminatic. Uh, should I drop fat 60 bucks for this? Um, that's a really good question. I guess it depends on, like... Do you, do you want a really mechanical, fast-paced shooter? Um, I would say so. It's an, it's an expertly crafted game. But maybe that's not what you care about. Oh, I love the first one? Then yeah, absolutely. Without question. Definitely, definitely, definitely go for it. Uh, just the, like, all the areas you go in this goddamn game are ridiculous. So I guess this is the Sentinel homeworld that, I guess the, so I don't understand. Do you go into, like, do you go into the past? Because, or, why is a maker chill with you coming back? Because the, the Sentinels that are there must be aligned with, uh... The Maker, right? I don't know. Maybe I'll figure it out. Sentinel Prime, here we go. This level has a lot of lore? Yes. Uh, the Ancient Arena is a holy place for the people of Argent Denur. Constructed in the earliest days of their history, this Colosseum served as a proving ground for trial by combat. Historical records indicate that the Argenta did not jail their own kind. Rather, prisoners and, prisoners and criminals were granted the right to earn a chance at regaining their honor through victory in the arena. Those who succeeded were given a place to fight at the front lines of the Sentinel Army to die in service to Argent Diner. This traditional use of the arena has subsided since the assimilation with the Dark Realm. The corrupted priests now allow more violent exchanges with armed captives pitted against demons for sport. The priests of the Order Deog continue to hold undisputed power on Argent Diner. Spilling the blood of the Argent Ascended class will result in the transgressor's banishment. Asylum amongst the Argenta will be denied to any who did not adhere to the rules of engagement. But I've done that. Clearly done that. So, it's, just, it's an extremely traditional society. You are very high ranking within it. But I've killed two priests already. And they are... They are, like, high ranking Argenta. Not here, though? Oh. Okay. Sentinels are chill until you kill their, their hell priests. They surround you right before the portal out of there. Okay. 
I guess you just have to lean into it being an ancient civilization, code of code of honor, or something, something, something. Yeah. It's weird flashbacks. And then you get the Deogic priests before they're super corrupted. They're kind of middle corrupted. We found him in the valley, just outside the castle walls. He was badly wounded and wearing this. This is so dumb. I saw this first time, I was like, no, you're not doing this. Guts. Huge guts. Kill them. Must kill them all. Literally the Doomslayer from the comic. Spite of his injuries. So dumb. Send him to the arena. Let him be judged like the others. <laughs> Anti-retcon, kind of, yeah. It... It made my eyes roll, too. But you know what? Doom Eternal is dumb, so I, I'm kind of okay with them going max dumb. Again, abandoning restraint. <laughs> Stupid. Look at him. Stupid Doom Slayer. Uh, with his little abs torn out. Ugh. I think the Sentinel say if you kill a high priest on their ground, it breaks their code. Ah, uh, okay. This confirms that he's from the first two and that he went insane? Yeah, Kitsune. The first three, I guess, technically. Doom 64. And yeah, since he, after the events of the first three games, since all he was doing was murdering demons, he just kind of lost his grip on reality, I guess. Or, like, his entire existence became murdering demons. This is translated from the Ligra Soltagenta, the Book of Kings. It's dumb, but we love it because of that a little bit. Yeah, Wolfenstein 2 made me sad as well. In the time of King Novik... As the Argent secured peace and safety through dimensions across time and space, an outlander came to us. He was not of our world and spoke an ugly tongue. How he first took step upon our lands was unknown. Sentinel scouts had found the outlander bloodied, clawed, and near death, mumbling of an impending doom and the enforces of darkness. The scent of blood followed him. Omar! Oh shit, dude, thank you for gifting subs, man. Just, just reading through some lore. I was sorry I missed you before, but I'm glad you decided to stop in again. Uh, I saw the uh, saw the text chain. We gotta we gotta get some uh, some Animal Crossing tourism going. Friend says Wyatt, or friend, your friend Wyatt says hi that he loves you. Well, thank you, Wyatt. Uh, I will I will absorb your love into myself and make it make it help me play Doom better <sighs> or read better, I guess. Uh, the scent of blood followed him, and the gore that stained his armor seemed not entirely his own. By Argenta law, the stranger would be judged in the Colosseum, where he would be given his or given the chance of all who stray from the path to fight for his freedom. We knew not of this stranger. His mind seemed crippled with rage. He dressed in attire not suited for our lands and carried munition of an arcane origin. We watched as his will overcame his injuries, and in the blood arena he proved his worth. Oh, Geralt! Thank you for gifting subs, too. Yeah, Omar, hopefully we'll see you soon, too. Uh, that got a little complicated, virus and all, but we're all we're all kind of missing each other at this point. But yeah, hopefully we'll hang out soon. I've been missing you, too, dude. Uh, the Outlander's technique was crude but and brutal, but the determination in his charge echoed that of any true-born sentinel. Dr. Levin! Gifting subs now. Jeez. All I'm doing is... I gotta read more, clearly. Thank you, guys. Uh, it's like a sub bukake, Yeah. I'm in the middle, just getting showered on. <laughs> Ew. Um, now, it's not gross, it's beautiful. And anyone who does it is a saint. There, I said it. Uh, his war cry echoed through the Colosseum as did the sound of his fury. And the guards cheered his banner, rip and tear. They shouted it as the beast pushed beyond mortal wounds and certain death. Tank memes gifting subs now. Thank you. Spray me in the face with those subs. Yeah, rip and tear is straight from the comic. It, yeah, there were a couple of references to it. It was pretty tasteful, and it's becoming less tasteful as the games go on, but that's okay. Uh, he would be gifted no rank, no title. The survivors in the arena were pro provided only one reward, the right to earn an honorable death while spreading the blessings of the makers to those in need. The Outlander's determination was witnessed, his ravings documented, and though the word of the Ordered Deag, oh, and through the word... Through the word of the Order Deag, the Khan Maker had brought him before her. She set her minions to learning his tongue. 
For with his ugly words, he spoke of lands unseen, creatures born of fire, and a dark place unknown to the queen and her caste. Yet he another opportunity to expand the gift of the makers to those in need. Oh. Oh. So it was the doom guy that clued in the makers to the demons. Well, that's interesting. And also kind of like cyclical Terminator style. So, the UAC in Doom... Well, they weren't... Were they the UAC in the original Doom? There were demons on Hell. Doom guy went to Hell, killed all demons. For somehow found his way to Argent. Or Argenta, Sentinel Prime. His raw fury in the arena there made the Sentinels bring him before the Con Maker. And then he told the Con Maker about Hell and the demons. And that clued the Con Maker in. Then the makers thought they could gift the demons with their knowledge. Uh, so that that is just kind of something that the the con or sorry the maker and the Argenta they like teamed up to go throughout the galaxy and basically like win wars on behalf of other nations and basically teach them how to not be so savage. Give them this amazing alien tech. It was my assumption that the con maker were setting up the Argenta to be harvested by the demons because they already knew about them. And technically, they, maybe they did. This doesn't necessarily say that the con maker didn't already know about that. Maybe more that they had then understood that Doom Guy knew about the demons too. And that that was going to be an issue. I offer you a great powerful one. Chip aside, this game is much longer. This is at least, this is like two and a half times the length of 2016. So... The, the Argenta and the Maker basically went throughout the galaxy kind of conquering and colonizing. Um, we got more lore here. Those are demons, all right. Uh, on the eve of the Black Star, the Dark Ones came from a world beneath our own. Not, th not through ship nor ephemeral vessel, but through the fabric of dimensions. Out of swirling fiery gates came horned beasts from a timeless realm. First one, then many, crashing waves of evil swelled from the obsidian forest of the Argentinian overlands. The Alorum clans from the eastern mountains fell first to the black hordes of devils, and the city of Talorum was slung under the weight of their charge. We sentinels rose to meet the beasts with spear in hand, the might of the holy fleet striking back at the demons. But the dark gates from whence they came gave birth still to even greater hordes. A line of blood was drawn with the fallen on both sides, and the unholy wars began as time, as the time of darkness came upon us. So that's the, they talk about the Black Star. Hmm, is that being the the like harbinger of the demon invasion? Uh, I still think that the Maker were the ones that were coordinating the invasion and like basically double crossed the Argenta race in general, use them for their ability to, to basically spread throughout the galaxy and identify a ton of worlds for the Maker to to basically harvest for their life essence. Um, I know of what you have left behind. Go back to it then. Leave this crusade. You cannot save them. They have asked me for this, and so I give it to them. If you let the priest live, then I will return to you what the demons took from you so long ago. What you talking about here? Yeah. Return I don't know. And it will be yours again. His rabbit? All the pain you carry will be gone. She might just be talking about giving him his bunny back. Uh, but yeah, she's getting desperate, I think. Uh, I thought the makers made a deal with Satan to benefit each other because they both specialize in torture and need arcane energy. That, I, th I think that's, I mean, there's no Satan referenced. They talk about, they talk about, briefly talk about the organization and the structure of Hell. Um, how there are like, there are hierarchy of demon leaders, but they never talk about Satan. They never talk about there being one leader uh, of Hell. It's implied that, I mean, it stands to reason, but they never really pinpoint that. Unlike enemies of the past, we could not contain the demons emergent from the Dark Realm. Their weaponry was not conjured from machine steel, but from the essence of their very being. A dark magic not known to us in our many conquests. Had we grown overconfident, our victory serving to dull our blade as we drank in the glory of our expanding empire? Lost, we knew not of how to prevail against this foe. The Maker God stood perplexed. 
and our engineers and priests scrambled to find the advantage in battle we so desperately needed. Unknown to the enemy, we were pushed to the brink of defeat, and our, and our god stood with us as we worked to find the answer. The Order of the Daag were the first to unlock the mystery of these foul creatures. The priests were able to capture several of the beasts and set about to identify the source of their power. It was then that the essence of the Dark Realm was discovered, which is basically Argent Energy, which is almost exactly what the humans did. Not wholly unlike our own, this power was the life essence that flowed through their twisted form and powered their attacks. It could be harnessed to power our own weapons, giving the Argenta the chance to combat the demons on even footing. The priests believed that with greater knowledge of the essence, we could discover its source and cut it off from the demons to strangle their armies from within, allowing us to regain the advantage we required for victory on the battlefield. The con maker gave blessings to our majesty and directed the priests to delve deeper into the mysteries of the scarlet elixir from the demonic realm, for she sought to only to return balance to our universe. Proper assimilation was required as hell stood beyond her influence. Samuel Hayden mentioned the deal with the Dark Lord, which I believe is Satan. Okay, sure. What do you think Clayton is doing in all this? Uh, he's just hes just probably laying low, waiting for all this to blow over. Okay. There are a few uh, codex pages that reference a singular Dark Lord. Gotcha. Oh, Pirate Zen. Thanks for the sub. <laughs> uh, after greater effort, the priests discovered more than they had ever hoped for. They learned of the true nature of the demonic energy and how it could strengthen those skilled enough to harness its power. The energy coursing through the malformed bodies of our relentless enemy could be used to end life or to enhance it. The power to heal, to mend, immortality, knowledge, and enlightened faculties beyond our understanding. With the demon's life force in the skilled hands of the sentinel priests and under the righteous gaze of the con maker, our people would not only rise to victory over the unholy horde that clawed at our walls, we would move to a higher plateau of existence, ushering in a new era of military science and industrial healing. No sentinel would grow sick, no maker would need to suffer the transfiguration they all so feared. What the hell is that? Because that's their death? Mm. All would be risen. None could ever oppose our peaceful ways and threaten our world again. True balance over hell and its legions, over space and time, in this world and all others, we would dictate the order. United with the Makers, we would find peace eternal. Not doom eternal. Um, so I guess, I guess I'm curious at what point the Maker decide to turn on the Argenta. Did they, like, did they see... Were they, were they tempted away by, like, the lure of, of essence or Argent energy? Or were they always... Did they always know about the demons and were just sort of playing along and playing dumb... Um, I guess, I guess it doesn't super matter one way or the other. More lore! <laughs> Stupid. Oh, that's the betrayer back there. Argent energy stops the transfiguration? Yeah, but... Into what? I, uh, yeah, uh, that much was implied. Uh, Ethereal Tallow, thanks for, thanks for the love, thanks for the resub. Curious about how the race fit all of this from 2016. Well, oh, so yeah, no, the Bill Packs, the Wraiths, that's part of that's part of Argent history. So oh boy. So on Argent Denur, a giant spike basically shot through the planet. The betrayer is not from Doom 3, the betrayer is not from anything. The betrayer is from this game and lore from 2016. Icy Hot Claws, thanks for the resub. Uh the Wraiths came out of a spike that shot through Argent Denur, the planet. Um they're just like weird magical creatures that I guess rode to that planet on a on a spike through space. Which kind of looks like the crystals you punch out of the platforms, which is kind of interesting. I figure the makers must have been behind the betrayal of the Sentinels when the betrayer tried to help them in return for his son, which they didn't give him. Yeah. So it's it's like them working with the priests, them goading the priests on to keep researching hell energy. And then also kind of like going along with this whole plan of sending all of the uh all of the uh uh the Night Sentinels and the Doom Slayer into Hell to destroy the Hellforge. That seemed to be like all all about their their crossing. Some people theorize the race are the actual angels as opposed to the makers. E maybe the uh, the game doesn't describe them as as being necessarily sentient or or necessarily benevolent. Um, so, however we conceive of angels, it's not necessarily what those are or how they're referenced in lore because the wraiths are just like crazy they just fly around and like the wraith call 
meant shit was about to get weird. Uh, is transfiguration, transfiguration another way to say death? Could be. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> the con maker demanded a tithe a tithe of the essence, and driven by her desire, the priests submitted themselves to her will. The order of the Dayag took counsel with the king, speaking only of the spoiled lands sure to be found through the cleft in creation, and the opportunity to purge the new invaders from Argentinur. We took the war to their cursed land, pressing through the gates of wizardry. Nice. There was one among us who seemed to know the true nature of these foul demons. It was the Outlander, the stranger who had come to us from places unknown, he who had survived in the front lines far longer than any sentinel-born prisoner had before. His passion for battle against the vile horde was evident, his lust for their destruction matching our own. Through, though Argentiner remained a foreign land to him, his fervor caught the attention of inquisitors of the Sentinel Guard, some whispering of a suspected allegiance he held in secret with the demons. Silencing the critics, King Novik deemed him worthy of selection. The signifiers brought a commission to our king, and it was decided that he be lifted from the common rabble. There was also a bit about how the Maker had a prophecy about a dark one that would cause them to downfall or whatever. Uh, the way they described the race, they were beings of elemental or argent energy that introduced essence to the Argenta. Yeah, well, yes, um, that seems that seems correct. Um, it does seem like they, they caused an explosion of, of like essence energy on Argentiner, which created life and wacky ass creatures and also the Argenta race. Um, so the, the wraiths are basically gods to them, but don't seem to have, uh, like consciousness of their own. They just seem like they're crazy beings that don't have like human beings, uh, sentience or the ability to communicate or even much of their own uh volition so yeah though no air though no arena born prisoner had ever been granted the honor the night sentinels broke tradition and deemed the outlander worthy of training a number of disciples grumbled and chafed at the barbarian present in their ranks but even in the war with but it, but in the war with the demons all opportunities for even the slightest advantage was to be considered as they witnessed the stranger spar with their hall masters they found him an undying unrelenting compatriot this man was an outsider friend to none yet rose each time he was thrown to the dirt of the circle battered and bruised his brow stained with blood he rose with grim determination for the chance to face his enemies in armed combat once again time passed as the stranger was instructed in the codified matrices of their order the ancient lessons of battle and brotherhood taught to all sentinels. He could sense the opportunity before him. Soon all of hell would feel his wrath once again. Satisfied that he would not be a detriment to their prowess, the night sentinels granted him his wish as they ventured through the hell gates with the stranger in tow. They knew no rest, fighting in the unnatural elements and training under the blood moon of night. The stranger suffered exhaustion, wounds, and sickness, but asked for no aid and was offered none. Three times the Night Sentinels ventured into the gate and back, and upon every return the stranger strode more capable than before. His gate locked in step with the march of the Sentinels, a disciplined and now controlled lust for demon blood ever present. The passing of years and numerous battles with the devils indentured the stranger to Argenta's mightiest warriors, and no longer did they condescend to him as a new-blooded conscript, for to them they had become a brother-in-arms forged in war, an ally and a weapon. So I feel like already there's some overtures that he get, gets stronger because of his combat. Ah, interesting. I feel like I'm going to need that. The three raids in Doom 2016 were the ones that the demons corrupted. They were using their essence to keep that hell portal open. Yeah. And it was, it was a major function of the Night Sentinels to also protect the people of Argentiner from the Wraiths. It's interesting that she calls it Argent. Thing, she says, this is how it's always been done. Which to me implies that they have a long history of finding civilizations 
grooming them and then harvesting them to, to provide power for their own race. Uh, yeah, Zan, Zanvir, it, by this point I think it's just him being trained with pros, not Mystic yet. I, I tend to agree. I think that's, that's accurate. <laughs> As we warred with the beasts, the Argenta Society grew, under the watchful eye of the Makers and through the endless power of the Essence. While our generals were consumed with the unholy war, our culture was marked by the beautiful potion the enemy had provided us, the sweet elixir. It brought us immeasurable capacity and empowered us to reach farther into dimensions once thought to be beyond our grasp. Under the direction of our maker gods and the engineering of our high priests, our weapons blazed and our war machine stormed. Always is pretty much a straight lie. Really? Huh. Uh, at, after the well was shut down, they needed human souls to make Argent, hence the whole invasion. Oh. Wait. That's what the well was in 2016? I thought that was something else. Huh. I, uh, it makes sense to me. I, it sounds like they were already intending to invade Earth. No, they, they talk about how they were already laying the groundwork to invade Earth before Doom, the Doomslayer blew up the well in 2016. Also, I don't think you blow up the well... You blow up the portal, or you just you you cut off the portal. Basically, what are you I'm trying to remember? Do you blow up the well? Well, whatever. The throngs of the populace drank deeply from the well of energy un unveiled by the priests, but we of the Night Sentinels took no part in their abundance. Some of, some among us whispered accusations and warnings against this manner of progress, but they were quelled, as it was not our role to dictate the future of our people, only to defend it. Jeez. Map. You free the race in 2016? Uh, I don't think you free them. You you use them to power the the crucible, right? Because you stab the crucible into them, and but they are corrupted by demonic forces, so they're they're bad race. Uh, if that makes any sense. You destroy the hellified wraiths that are just over glorified batteries. Yeah, that uh that seems to be the case. They literally only used Wraith energy, but the Seraphim... When the Seraphim stole the Father, the process for the new Khan Makers to be created is interrupted. This forces the current Khan to use Argent to prolong her life, corrupting her. Ooh. I didn't know about any of that, Shark Man. That sounds cool. I haven't gotten to that lore yet, I don't think. So, only use the, the Wraith energy when Seraphim stole the Father. Oh, so, okay. So the idea is that Hayden took Vega, or whatever became Vega, from Argentinur and his many expeditions there. Nice. like how they... The only color they have is for the blood splurches and some of the runes. As the Black Star ascended to its zenith, King Novik sat restless, restless, restless on his throne as a howling darkness began to assemble just beyond the mountain rise to the east. The Blight came upon us in droves, flooding forth from the Hellgate with merciless fury. They brought with them a monstrous titan, the Dreadnought, a beast to rival the stature and menace of even the mightiest ancestral. The grotesque giant laid waste to all before him, crushing all in his path. This was a total demonic assault, striking at the heart of Argentinur as never before. How was it that the behemoth could pass through the demonic gate without warning? We would never know though the Night Sentinels believed treason was at play. Caught off guard, the Sentinels scrambled late in defiance of the Titan and his horde, and with his coming, the holy city of Terras Nabod prepared for judgment. With the onslaught of the demons massed in the sprawling shadow of the abhorrent fiend, the city shook to its foundation. None were spared, save those that fled north. The vile swarms ransacked our temples and palaces, burning our towers and feasting on the souls of our clergy. Yet the Night Sentinels rallied and held fast against the demons, though they were pushed back and corralled at the Blood Arena. As the dark of night descended, their swords remained potent and shred the enemy multitude with abandon. Amidst the unyielding ranks of the Sentinels, when all the other apprentices had fallen in battle, stood the Outlander. Outlander. Blech. Yeah, the switch. I think, I, think it's, I think it's Tarantula Island time for Steph. 
Rip and tear, he roared, ferocious in battle. The remaining conscripts of the arena stood in awe as they witnessed the beast who had once raged within their very cells, now armored alongside the shoulders of his sentinel brethren. He had risen where none other had before, a true-born sentinel fighter, the very best among them. But though the swarm fell under... But though, the swell, ah, but though the swarm fell before their assault, the titan remained invincible, for none could tame the behemoth alone. In the hours before dawn, as the night sentinels weathered the relentless assault, the outlander held his ground at the foot of the great wall in the northern bend of the castle. Seeing his unending vigor, Samur, Samur, chancellor to the mother god, hurried the outlander away under a veil of secrecy and for reasons unknown submitted him to a rite untold. Okay. This is the thing. Okay, this is the thing, where they charge him up, right? This was heresy, for Samur received no consent from the con maker, nor did he receive her counsel. In the Chapel of Purity, the Outlander submitted himself to the divinity machine. There, Samur Maker, the seraphim known to, to us as... Wait. The seraphim known to us only as the aid to the mother god, blessed the Outlander with fierce speed and power to match his will. Okay. So the wretch and the seraphim are the same person, and he's got a same, he's got a name, Sam, Samer Maker, Samuel Hayden. It's, yeah, God, I hope not. Ugh. Not everything has to click together, but whatever. It was the method by which this transfer, transfusion took place that was most uncertain to us, for we were of the no... We were of the knowledge that the Maker device bestowed unto the Argenta so many generations ago wait, wait, was to be used by the priests only to find the impurity among us. How could it be that the device was meant to cull the sentinel breed of its contaminants? Or how could it be that the device that was meant to cull the sentinel breed of its contaminants could then be used to purify the Outlander's body and give rise to the one who would lead us into battle henceforth? That's a really good... It's a really good point. So yeah, they I remember them talking about the the like the prophecy that there was gonna be a an impure one. And the fact that Vega is well, you know. Ugh. I don't think Samuel Hayden is maker though, that makes no sense to his human life. Unless it's like a causality fallacy thing, like self fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Or a reincarnation thing. I mean, they're saying that like spirit energy can be removed from the body, so it's possible that spirit energy can I don't know. Yeah. Eh. I'm, I'm hoping it's not like uh, the spirit of this guy who just went through the live stream and found its way into Samuel Hayden and he was born as a normal human. Uh, Commander Guy, thanks for the resub. So I was gifted a sub instead of reoccurring. Back on that sub life now, though. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. What rose from the holy coffin on that fateful day was not the impure abomination the covenant warned us of. The hero within would come to be known only as the Great Slayer, the Time Walker. The warrior Khan, whose fire sword would blaze forth a path for the just and cut through the demonic horde with a vengeance that only a god king could summon. He rose unbroken by the ritual, his eyes burning with maker magic. He took the crucible in his hand and wraith fire leapt from, forth from the blade as only it will when held by a true sentinel warrior king. In our darkest hour, the slayer had been chosen. Defying tradition, our most sacred laws, and the will of the great Khan herself, a stranger to our lands had been blessed with celestial might. Nah, yeah, maybe Hayden will go back in time to to do that to the Doom Slayer. I don't know. Hayden's body was built by humanity. I mean, it's yeah, it's possible that he was already messing with Maker Tech or Argent Tech. Hayden was the one who built his own body. Um, and I, I don't know the timeline. Like, by that point, was he already on Mars? Um, or was this before he was the leader of the, the UAC? I can't recall. You and me at the same point right now, so I'm gonna have to log off. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, Coonster. Oh, Day Grav, awesome. Dayog, I guess it's Dayog. Dayog Grav remains the most powerful of the Hell Priests among the people of Argentinur, frequently visiting his ancient homeworld to lord over the populace. Pfft. Arrogant and pompous, Grav calls for a blood sport in the arena to entertain the fallen citizens of Sentinel Prime. I didn't know they were still around. 
Uh, isn't Hayden who the priests of Deog brought him to Mars? Huh. I don't know. <laughs> Since the demonic invasion of Earth began, he has operated on the planet's surface along with a fellow hell priest to direct hell's forces, but after the deaths of Deag Nylox and Deag Renak, he has fled to the safety of the arena. It was Deag Graf who facilitated the torment and eventual betrayal of, the sen of Sentinel Commander Valen, taking the keys of the to the sepulcher of elements and opening the vault of the sleeping wraiths. The ancient creatures were abducted, transported to hell, and tortured to siphon away their power. He used the heart of Valen's son to animate the icon of Sin, a titan still spoken of in legend throughout Argentinur. Damn. Uh, hey, Bloodflame, would you rather have to taste poop while pooping normally, or poop out of your mouth but not taste it? Uh, I'd say poop out of my mouth but not taste it. Can other people smell it? Because I'd probably get pretty used to tasting poop, I think. Also, I could just mouthwash right after. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of X factors there. If I get poop in my mouth, then I probably wouldn't want that because then I would like breathe poop breath on people. Why am I talking about this? Because because somebody brought it up. It's important. It's an important question. These are big thoughts. Gladiator. Oh, right. It's a boss fight. In the years following the end of the Golden Age, competing factions of Argentinur turned against one another. An insidious influence had beset itself upon the Sentinel people, corrupting its once-held sacred traditions. The Colosseum, once a place of honorable combat where prisoners of the Argenta were tested for the right to fight in the front lines of their army, has since become a place of blood sport. In violation of Sentinel law, the priests have encaged a demon there, a merciless executioner used to enact judgment of their own decree. The gladiator, wielding an accursed shield, which entombs the tormented soul of his undying master, remains undefeated in battle, infamous for the many lives it has claimed. Whew. I'd really like that this game give you lore pictures and tutorials about each enemy type after you encounter them and not before. For the most part, it does that. You only get lore for most enemies after you kill them once. It is it is weird that they give you the bosses first. That's how 2016 worked. So I'm guessing that's... No, that's one of the priests, right? to the front line, stranger. The demons! They are everywhere. Must kill them all! Dress his wounds and bring him to us. I want to know more about the uh, he speaks of. Yes, your grace. Huh. Uh, maybe she wanted to know how much he knew. Uh, Silver Slay Fox, every now and then I see you doing sub-only streams. Build on these grounds. Okay. You, um, you every Friday I do what I call a media tech, which is I just play the clips that I show before and after I stream when I go on break. I just play that for like three hours. Just a place to hang out and watch weird clips. Um, lately I haven't been doing it sub-only because I feel like... I feel like it's a good distraction, you know? And also, I think fundamentally it's just a bad idea. Like, there's not really a point to arbitrarily restricting the number of people who could watch that. Uh, so hold on a second. I'm trying to remember this, this boss fight. Oh, ambient. Wait. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, they don't... That's just, that's just lore. They don't tell you his weak points.
like how the shield blinks before it attacks. That's so goofy. Damn it. Oh, it's it's a different attack, okay. God, you keep nailing me with that. God! Jesus Christ! I don't understand. I'll figure this out. Still got me. I gotta wait a little bit longer. Shit. Ah! Dash at the green flash? Really? Okay. Are you sure about that? That doesn't seem like a thing. I feel like everyone that tells me to dash at something, I swear to god, they're, they're all just trolling. Because that's been said multiple times and it never does anything. Oh, lol. Okay. It's just... Now I, now I know what a shitty troll is. I guess it wasn't shitty because it worked. Parry that shit, it gets stunned? What do you mean parry? There's no parry in this game. Unless you mean shoot at. Which I... That would just be me shooting at a shield, but I can try it. Alright. the flash, not direction? I don't know what that means. I don't think it's the same as the Marauder. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I think you have to get out of the way of his... You have to shoot around his shield. Try the Ballista. Alrighty. God. Maybe towards the shield side, he can't swing the weapon that way? Well, I guess that's true. I mean, if you dodge to the right, his shield's in the way and you can't hit him. I mean, that one works, but it's only because he leaves it out. God. Uh. The animation for the fast one and the slow one look really similar. I 
think there's a tutorial for him. I'm pretty sure I just looked. But I can look again. Drones. Now there's a lore intro, but shoot, don't dodge. Tutorial section to the very right. Oh. Uh, ah. Shoot him when its eyes are going to stagger and create it over. I guess. I can't. You're, it's like shoot him, but you can't shoot the shield. Ow. He had two. Big Dugano, thanks for the reset. Oh, that's right, he blocks. Jesus. Fuck! Alright. That phase two is going to be fun to figure out. Jesus. Damn it. Fuck. Ha, oh, man. Ah. Uh. Oh right. Yeah. Oh, this this part's cool. Except there's minions in here with me. Are we there? Ow! Damn. Shit. Use BFG if you got ammo? Eh. I'm trying to figure out his pattern. That's... I gotta learn him. So fast. What? Ah. Shit! That was a bad idea. Ooh. Yeah, this music is great. And at least the loads are really fast. How do you not get popped when you like... Man, that does not do much damage. Fuck. Fuck! Dude. Shit. Getting those stuns are pretty nice. Fuck. Dude! What the f- Ah. Uh. Didn't have ammo! Crap. 
Mm -hmm. This is an interesting problem. Fuck! Yeah. Alright, that... God, those rockets are, are nice! That is a lot of damage. Fuck! What? Oh, I keep forgetting he does that after. Ah. Stun seem to be the way to go. Sure. I'll just stun him more. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm aware of the mechanics of the stun. Merely explaining the mechanics is not useful. As usual, it's about hitting the buttons properly. I'm aware that I need to hit the right button at the right time. Will. I'll get there. That does a shitload of damage, though. Holy shit. I don't really even need to worry about the stuns if I can hit those rockets on them like that. Ah. Fuck, though. Man. Ah. Okay. Two. Three. Four. Five. Shit, man. Okay, so maybe he always does five? I feel like... I feel like... I feel like you have to be able to count. Um, otherwise, there's no way to react to that. It's too fast. Use the Makiri counter? Yeah. I want to! And that's essentially what this is, right? Yeah, the lock-on does a crazy amount of damage. I wasn't... I'm not prepared for how effective this is. I can just do this the whole fucking fight. Look at that! That's like a four or twenty-five percent. That's great. Ah. Fuck. Yeah, just to get rid of all the boys. Fuck. Ah. Damn it! Two, three, four, five. What the fuck, man? Once the walls go down, you can dodge out before he charges at you. Okay. His like going from going from shielding to immediately hitting you is ridiculous. He does that so fast. Oh, you have to dodge out? Oh, okay. Alright. I think it- I think it- I think it glitched or something. Well, it seems to be fine now. Ah, uh, what? Shit. Assholes. Really? When he gets that close to you, I guess he I guess he just gets a free hit if he gets close. That's seems to be the case. There we go. Okay, so rocket launcher. Stay the fuck away from him. Yeah, remote detonation seems pretty bad in this game. 
with the amount of damage that, that the lock-on does. Once you upgrade it, and it's fast enough. To the... Yeah, lock on is way better. What was that all about? This stops nothing. Earth will be consumed. So you get the token that that like I guess took out his soul protection or whatever? I don't know. Is your arbalest mod for ballista more damage than the regular shot? I would I'm pretty sure. And then he throws the coin? Yeah. The demon had a sentinel soul as a base? Maybe? Can we do a new skin now? Uh... I would, uh... I would be down for that, except I'm actually... I think I'm done streaming for tonight. That'll be the last one for tonight. Uh, but next time I play, I can switch it up a little bit. I believe tokens are what neutralizes the priest's immortality. It could be what Doomslayer spent the last two years acquiring. Ah, oh, could be. Yeah, could be. That's a good theory. I like that. Oh, almost to that skin or whatever that is. Need to level up the unicorn outfit? I'm trying. Uh, what all do I have? Oh, it's sparkly, so I'll go with that. Part of the Twitch Doom Eternal series? Yeah. It's... Here we go. So I'm, I'm at level 4, I guess? I have no idea how you see how this levels up, or what you need to do to level it up, but... Yeah, that's I'm tr just what I'm trying to do. So, what new skins do you have? I mean, uh, for Doom Guy, let's see. I think... Is that supposed to be a Commander Keen type thing? Maybe. Crimson, Midnight. Classic Doom Marine, which is pretty cute. Demonic, is on fire. Rawr. Praetor, which is the suit from 2016. Sentinel, which is, uh, unlocked. Astro is all maker. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. Zombie Slayer. And Doomicorn, which is beautiful. You, you right, though. Yep, that is, uh... I haven't really looked through all the other ones. Look at how marbled he is. Little guy. Got some good meat there. Where's Classic Doom Guy? He was right there. Did you not see it? Classic Doom Marine, there he is. The stupid little abs showing. It's great. Uh, I think you wanted to scare the other priests and the guardians had their coins. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's something like you have to tie your immortality to another living thing. Oh. Okay, guys. That's, uh, that'll be it for tonight. Do you have any demon skins? I don't know. I don't, th I don't think so. Maybe, not many. I have... I tell you what I do have. I have doot. So that's important. Doot. Yeah, like a horror crux or something. Who knows? Who knows, man? It's not like I know lore or anything. <laughs> Alright. Thank you guys for watching. Pretty long stream today. Nine hours, getting there. But I appreciate your appreciate your time, appreciate your views, appreciate your conversation, appreciate your hot tips, appreciate it all. So, thank you guys. Hope you guys had a good day. Uh, and hopefully tomorrow will be just as good. And I'll be I'll be streaming then. Tomorrow's Tomorrow's Friday? Tomorrow's Friday. Yeah. Ooh, maybe it's time for more Batman Forever reading? I don't know if I really want to break down all my gear for that. Oh yeah, well, I'll, I'll see how I feel tomorrow. Alright, thank you guys for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye everyone!